G'day everybody, and welcome back for some more Station News. Um, last time I was trying to learn some stuff with the IC10 programming, and from my perspective, it went pretty well. <laughs> I thought uh, something was a little... I, I thought I did... I, I got something that worked, and for me, that's... That's a big achievement. I got something that I can actually use, and it functioned. I was talking about, however, putting onto this display the words CO2, and having it flick between that and the values. Unfortunately, I've been informed that's not actually possible with the IC10 programming. So sad. Um, yeah. But, I guess we'll figure out another way of doing it. Somehow. Uh, and yes. <laughs> Just before this stream, I was adding a few extra commands to Nightbot. Um, which go in chat. Things like, uh, the very commonly asked question of, How in Space Engineers am I supposed to dump stuff into an inventory? Splitzy, how are you doing that? And now it has a thing to post the link to my build planner tutorial because that's usually the best way for people to find out about those commands i am pretty happy with how this greenhouse space is going though because we're down to 33 degrees which means i can start planting stuff in these assuming this water is not now frozen which it is not. It is at 23 degrees. Thanks, Capuval. Uh, and yes, Mike, I have just put two more things to add to my Nightbot command list. One is never press P, and the other one is stream start. To remind people that due to... Do you know how much... Uh, these streams are watched on YouTube? I do things a bit differently to some other creators in that I restart my stream just before going live because otherwise editing that to go onto the Flipsy channel is a horrendous nightmare. So it just cuts off the first stream starting bit. So what I thought I'd try and do today is maybe expand a little bit more of the base. As in, get the stuff that's going to go behind that wall so I can really start working in here, start growing some plants, and think about ways I'm going to um, use the giant amount of space I have behind that wall. Uh, yeah, from what I hear, Capival, um, IC10 is meant to be MIPS-like, from what I understand, but I don't understand a lot about that stuff, so I could well be wrong. Let's just dump all my stuff in here. Uh, that's also what I can do. Hmm. I will obviously be moving this arrangement from the floor and putting it into some of the space behind this wall. I'd like to not have that stuff mounted in the in what is probably going to be the one of the nicest spaces in the base because it'll have all the little plants and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, what am I doing? I was supposed to do a whole lot of mining and that never happened. Uh, unfortunately. But I did at least make a few stacks of cable. So I had some reason I thought I needed that. I don't recall it now, which is annoying. Hmm. Hmm. 
I'm so lost right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's uh, let's go by. We can now use the greenhouse, so I'm gonna start demolishing the old bit of the base. Yeah, true, Mike. With the chips, it is a lot easier to relocate stuff because it is a much smaller thing. Uh, right. Let's go harvest those tomatoes, grab all the seeds, take them up there. Maybe, actually, maybe before I... Uh, no, I'm going to chance it. I'm going to chance it. I was about to say maybe before I demolish this place, I will make sure that the other greenhouse is working. But no, let's start the clock. Can't you just stick a nice big heavy planter pot or some other heavy cumbersome yet completely useless semi-decorative item over that setup? Yes, I probably could. It does sound like a thing. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Seeds, all of the seeds. I need to make a kitchen in that back area. Amongst other things. And at some point today, maybe we'll have time to do the... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit? Oh, brain, why? Why do I keep getting distracted? What is wrong with my head this morning? Um, Maybe we'll have time to... No, it's gone. It's completely gone. Completely gone. Arg. <laughs> Hi, Mocky Mac. Uh, Root Boy, Stationers versus SC, what do you have more fun with in single player? Neither? Both? Depends on my mood? They're, they're different games. Though different, different, different games for different days. Why can I not stack the decayed food straight out of the egg carton? And what else? That, I think, is all I need to bring inside. Eh, might as well bring a water bottle in. Oh, I should probably... Yes. Oh, no, I do have a water bottle thing inside. Maybe I want a water bottle thing outside. Yeah, I was saying something about a kitchen, but... Um... I don't know where it was going. I don't... I... Yeah, I don't know where my head was going with it. it... The thought that I had has completely evaporated. Uh, which is... Probably not a bad thing. It was probably a bad thought. I'm hoping to play around with the egg things, because I've never done that, but I need to build a some sort of beacon thing before I can do that, because I have to call down a trader. Bean seeds, pumpkin seeds, potato seeds, wheat seeds. Uh, right, that's all that moved. Let's let's plant these tomatoes and see if they survive. Unfavorable lighting. That's all. We are happy. We should be good. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was the thing I was going to say. Uh, it's something I've said in a lot of the previous streams. Eventually, I'll build myself a recycling facility. 
<laughs> so that I can um, centrifuge down and process the bad uh, ore boulders I made as well as the old, uh, recycle the old filters. Uh, yes, these reagent mixers spin them back down to separate them out. Um, I feel sad kind of killing those plants off, but I would like to remove this bit of the old base, which might actually include removing this solar array. I think. Yeah, let's start with that. Can these be placed? No, they require support. Hmm. Can these be placed upside down? No. No, they cannot. But what I could do is build, like, a support... That's weird. Build a support beam across here and put a bunch of wind turbines in the middle. Because they shouldn't be affected by that as long as the wind's moving east to west. Yeah, let's do that. Let's start with that. I also wanted to build a massive wind turbine at some, time, some point, didn't I? I wonder what they cost to make. We got any frames down here? Iron frames? Nope. Iron sheets. Steel sheets. More steel sheets. Walls, 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 walls. Okay. Uh, let's grab some more of the steel that's down here. Because I think I'm out of steel up in the base. I'm also a bit low on steel in general. Uh, the old array is in a building because the old array is made of solar panels that can take damage from storms. So they need to be protected. I mean, they don't have to be. You could just repair them after each storm, and that's not that huge a hassle from what I hear because it's just using duct tape. But I... I kind of prefer the idea of not having to do that maintenance. Oh, Logan. The space engineer's joke. When chickens lay eggs in microgravity, does it propel them forward? Yes. It should. Well, yeah, I imagine it's a big hassle when you forget to repair them, Caperman. Imagine that would be quite annoying. And also something I would do. Almost certainly. Uh, let's check two things. One. Let's get a few more of these, which need more iron. Well, no, Lohan, while the chicken has more mass... The egg still has mass, so therefore you will have a slight amount of force pushing the chicken forward. It's just the egg will go more forward. It's not that the chicken is completely static. If you're in zero gravity, equal and opposite reaction. You will have a slight push to the egg. It's like um, ejecting out rocket exhaust. The rocket exhaust has less mass, but will have greater velocity, but will still push the rocket forward. Um, yeah, I might make a laptop at some point. Uh, I think I have three. I 
Ah, uh, yeah, Retribution. It's a new thing since Capac and I last played together. The uh, storms were not a thing back then. Neither were, uh, were wind turbines. I don't think wind turbines were either. There's quite a lot that's been added since we last played together. Get three of those. And then I'm going to see what I need to make the big one. Now, could you power a spaceship by chicken power? It would be a very slow ship, I imagine. Yeah, I've, I still haven't seen the chickens. I'll I'll have I, I'm excited to see the chickens. I haven't even looked at thumbnail like pictures of the chickens. Uh, right. Uh, let's make a couple more of these just because I have no idea how this big wind turbine is going to place. Uh, the chickens you can buy. I just need to get the satellite thing or the that like broadcasty thingy me jiggy so I can actually contact a trader. Ah, that'll do. Yes, that is why you have the credit card because you can sell and buy. Ah. Uh, just, I think it's unlikely you'll see us playing on Sea of Thieves. Um, don't think capac has got a lot of interest in it. And yeah, yeah. Don't. I think it's unlikely. Now, which is going to look nicer? Do I build it up at this height? Yeah, why not? Oh, there's only four of these. I built too many turbines. Probably didn't make that need to make that airtight. Oh well. Power comes out the heavy cable side, so... Oh, hang on. One. Two. Oh, uh, wait, hang on. No, that's not right. Um, how can I make this neat with five? Can I make this neat with five? Yeah, actually, let's do this. That looks neat. It's probably not maximally efficient, but I don't really care. Why make this neat? Because I want to. Very low power output wind turbines. Now, how does the other one look? Always 
if it barely functions, then it's all about form. Ooh, you are you are a biggin. Hmm. Where should I put you? Kind of needs to be over here with the rest of the power production, but I kind of don't want to build it too near. Maybe I can put it sort of in front of this post. So, Dragnod, bringing up the city's skylines roads, that, that's actually how I play cities, skylines, and SimCity and stuff like that, because I, I've i spent so long playing those games that, to me, the idea of building yet another grid that's somehow trying to balance everything is just turning those games into Factorio, Satisfactory, etc. I, I actually... I like the challenge of trying to improve something that feels like it grew organically, uh, even though obviously it didn't. Surely the big turbine will make the little ones work better by pushing air towards them. <laughs> that makes me think of Futurama where the animals were getting cooled by the Dutch windmills. Or at least that's what the news presenter said. Am I going to pave the entire planet? No. No, I'm not. Oh, right. I've... Okay. I did not realise this was actually centred on a block. I thought it was across four. Ah, which is why I put the four thing down. I did not need to do that. Uh... Place it there anyway. What else do I need for this? Welding torch and five steel sheets. Oops. Screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? Uh-oh. <laughs> I appear to have lost my screwdriver. Where have I put it? I wondered why I had so many slots for cable coil. Oh, I've done something strange with it, I bet. I probably need to just make a new one. Fortunately, that's not going to be a problem. Yeah, Flam, when I normally when I play uh, City Skylines, I'll pick a map that's got quite extreme terrain so that it makes a lot of sense to follow the terrain with how you build. Oh, there's my screwdriver. Uh, rather than building rather than playing on a relatively flat map like what we did, but we played on a very vanilla setting because that's all of all that the multiplayer mod can handle. This is where you find out a simple screwdriver takes Astroloy. 
<laughs> yeah, I might have stirred the soup with the screwdriver. I opened the can. Decided this time I wasn't going to chew on the can, so I thought I'd open it with the screwdriver. And stab myself in the hand instead. Oh, why is my foot itchy? Surely the angle grinder is for opening cans. Uh, yeah, that would also probably work. I was just thinking about the very common action of thinking a screwdriver is a good tool for that sort of thing and ending up with uh, an injury that hospitalizes you. Rather than one that makes you lose fingers. As I'm sure an angle grinder would, as a can opener, would predispose you to. A hammer is good for cans. It may be good for smashing the can, but it's not going to be good being able to eat the stuff that's in the can. Alrighty, we are going to get some epic power output on the next <laughs> storm. Uh, where is my card for the, the power output stuff? Hi, Harley. Um... I chipped a tooth once trying to open something I shouldn't have, so I think I might take the angle grinder chances. Yes, teeth teeth are not good for a lot of things that you end up trying to use them for. Uh, yeah, I guess a claw hammer is a valid tin opener, can opener. Probably safer than a screwdriver, to be honest. War scanner, airlock. Okay, it's not in here. Also, have you guys... Ooh. Time to the seeding. Oh, yeah. There we go. Bonus seeds. Uh, right. Where have I left that? I think I might have to make new ones. I don't know what I've done with the extra things I had for the tablet. Oh, wait, are they in here? I should have checked here before I went right. Now I can analyze. That's what I wanted. Silly, silly me. Device is 29. What? I don't know how to interpret the information I'm looking at. <laughs> also, is the network analyzer what I want to see how much output I'm actually getting from this one wind turbine? Or do I need to look at the data side of things? Have I got... You're getting about 40 to 60. So I'm getting 100 and... Okay. So from my f six wind turbines, which includes this one, I'm getting 
right now, like 140 watts. Why is my required going up as my potential goes up? I don't understand this. Um, so, this network should be isolated and should only be reading what the batteries are taking. But they should... So there's 1.45 kilowatts required on this outside, on outside of this, and I've got a potential of 16 point, almost 16.5 megawatts. But then if we go to this side, which is the in, the required keeps going up. I would have thought the required would go down with that battery being fully charged. Is there some weird mathematical error that's going on here that's causing that? Okay, and now we see that the sun is coming up. Because <laughs> the solar panels are now putting out their component of it. So we've gone from a hundred and something watts overnight to almost four kilowatts during the day. And now the required is going down. I'm really confused. I don't I don't know what the required is reading in this case. Oh, hold up. Is the required actually megawatt hours, not megawatts? And it's just being cut short? So it's it's actually reading the amount required to store, to fully uh, charge these batteries. That's probably what's going on, isn't it? Because now that we've got a lot of extra power input, it's actually going down. Because if we're taking 1.35 kilowatts out overnight, I was losing about 1.2 kilowatts. Which is why the required kept going up. But now that we're exceeding it, it's actually coming down rather rapidly. It's megawatts per tick, so yeah, it's... It's kind of megawatt hours. It's a... Yeah. It's not just a... Um... Yep. Makes sense now. Okay, cool. So, the amount of power I get from the wind turbines is... Extremely limited compared to the solar panels. But, you know, I knew that. Yeah, unless there's a storm, in which case... Blown out cables everywhere! I'm tempted to make another big battery since I've got two that are fully charged, but I kind of don't need to, because I've got two that are fully charged. Uh... Can make more nuclear batteries at some point. Alright, the tomatoes are ready for harvest. That means let's destroy this place. Rip it up. Yeah, Nev, that's true. My atmosphere is extremely thin, so I shouldn't expect a lot of uh, wind. Power. It is nice to have some backup just in case, I guess. Uh...
now that that's done, let's pop this thing. Here we go. Whoosh. I probably should have captured some of that gas, shouldn't I? Oh well. <laughs> it's too late now. I've been wasteful. Hi, oh, you go off. Yeah, no, there was no real danger there. That was that was always going to be a bit um, lackluster in terms of how, the, how low the pressure was in that greenhouse. Uh, let's start putting the production stuff away in here. I'm just going to throw all the rotten food on the floor in the greenhouse. I really need to get rid of that. That's another one of my cooling setups, isn't it? It's kind of a bit of a trip hazard. Look at this! Look at all my beautiful tomatoes. I like this. I like this. Hey, thanks, William Reed. Thanks so much for 11 months. Almost a year. Thank you kindly. Does Atmo wind in station ears function like real Atmo, as in it has air pressure, because you could then make air funnels that compress air in the direction of the turbines? I Yes, it sort of works like that. Um, there are turbines that do work that way, so you can compress air, push it through the turbine, and then... Um, take power from that. Those, these ones don't work that way. I could potentially use the furnace to generate power by using the other type of turbine. Uh, kit turbine generator. Is that it? Because I think you can put the hot gases from the furnace that go from high pressure to low pressure on something like this. Maybe. Let's make one. Let's see what it is. Uh, yes, putting some flooring down would probably help, but also I don't need to keep that system in place anymore. I actually can't even remember what what I was doing with this one. Oh, that was my negative pressure system. That was my try to evacuate this. I really don't need it anymore. So it's, I think it's this sort of thing you need. Oh. Okay. I thought this was going to be piped to, not um, having to make a room for. Uh. Huh. Save that for later. Yeah, I have to make that a big duct. Put so like, I think it could be quite cool uh, to do something like that with the furnace gases as a way to get power from them. Maybe. Uh, 
Uh, right, let's let's um keep the demolition works going, and then I will start. Oh, actually, no, we'll do the demolition works afterwards because I should start working on the on laying out the stuff for the new area so that I can evacuate it of gas while doing the demo work. Yummy tomatoes. We're going to have more rotten tomatoes soon. I'm going to have an unnecessarily large amount of food, but I don't care. So I need lots of walls. I need a few frames. And I need lots of steel sheets and plastic sheets. Get wall... I left all my frames outside, didn't I? I think. Let's just make a few anyway. Yep, I'm aware that there are fridges and cookers and packages and stuff. That's why I need a kitchen. So I'm going to put stuff... I'm going to put that stuff in a kitchen. But I'm still going to end up with so many tomatoes that I'm going to end up with tons of rotten ones. Because I'm planning on making that greenhouse the size that it would probably, in station ears, feed like 10 people <laughs> maybe even more just because i think it'll really look cool if that room is just covered in plants uh, what else have we got in here that might be useful we do want the stair kits Possibly want a couple of those. Don't need insulated pipes or anything yet. I'll grab the glass sheets. Uh, yeah, that's all I need for now. Now let's get some walls. Kit wall. We got some more. Yeah, we got some more silicon. Yeah, I might have a ton of potatoes as well. With the food balance, that room will feed 100,000 people. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to balance food, plant growth requirements in a survival game to a level where it's an interesting mechanic. I think... I think we just have to accept that having farms the size of what are actually required to feed a person is excessive for a game and kind of unnecessarily painful for a game. But equally, I kind of feel like a lot of games, the amount of farming you require is so minuscule that it's kind of like, oh, I wanted to build a bigger farm and it just feels silly now. I'm just going to end up with heaps of uh, silly stuff now. So I... I don't envy someone trying to balance that. Because I... I don't, I don't even know what I would want. Because what I want seems to change depending on the game, depending on situations, depending on how easily I'm managing to deal with the other survival issues. Um, like in Space Engineers... I'd want it to be big. Like, so big that to build a ship for it would be painful. But then, that's because I find building a mobile base in Space Engine is so easy that I, I want that extra challenge. But that doesn't mean that I even vaguely represent what most players would want. And yeah, Retribution, that's exactly it. The biggest challenge is making food and water an interesting challenge without making it a death loop. 
Because in the early game, it will be a death loop unless you provide the player a means to get food. And I, I think games like Seven Days to Die have it a bit easy on that front. Because you can loot for food early game. And that's how you're supposed to get food early game. You're supposed to loot for food until you get to the point of farming. And so their farming, you can actually... They can force you to have quite a large farm because you can keep looting for food. Or hunting to get a little bit of food to tide you over until the farming can get to a point where you really don't need to hunt anymore. Um, and I suppose however a game can approach that sort of thing might be a good way of doing it. So instead of making farming the only way to get food, make it the best, inverted commas, best way of getting food or a way of getting a lot of food just intermittently. Yeah, Incognito, I don't want food. I don't think I want food in the base Space Engineers game. I've been mulling over Space Engineers and the feelings of... and how you might get a feeling of progression. And I think for Space Engineers, you kind of need to go back to a point where you're like, all right, what blocks are needed for what goals and go back even further what are universal goals in space engineers and how do you make a feeling of progression as people move through those universal goals and are there even any universal goals in space engineers like in stationeers there are universal goals because we've got survival aspects there's you need water you need food you need a pressurized space so that you can grow your food that sort of thing those, those are universal goals but in space engineers are there any and if you come back to those universal goals or maybe even think about what could what could be interesting universal goals then you can kind of build up the system of what blocks are required for each of those and how do you stagger those out so that you can get to the first goal with the first set of blocks the second goal with the next additional block, the third goal and so forth, and that gives you that sense of progression because you know you have to achieve this task to get to this thing and this task to get to this thing. And if you're a really skilled player, sometimes you should be able to bypass certain steps if you want to. But having that general arc of progression would also smooth out the learning curve. Uh, I haven't got any thoughts yet on how to do that. I've just been thinking through how do you get back to square one for for space engineers? Where is square one? What does it look like? And Because I think that's how you might come up with a way of making a mod for space engineers that really adds a sense of progression. And I forgot to bring plastic with me. Um, yeah, Bella Crack, I think in general games with food systems need to have... Oh, I shouldn't say need. Can benefit from uh, a system where you gain more benefits from better foods that require more inputs so that the farming stuff creates, creates its own little mini game of things to do. Because in so many games... You can get by so easily on some really basic, basic foods. And there's not really much push to go to something better. Uh, partially, I think that comes down to the balance effects of those early food things being just kind of too good. Uh, in Icarus, I really don't find any need to go beyond cooked or dried meats. I know that there are other foods that are better, but I don't feel the need because I... If I get to the point where those better foods are the difference between life and death, I've done something else dumb along the way <laughs> that I could have avoided and not needed to do those things. So you don't really need a chef and you don't really need the cooking table. 
I think that's kind of sad because they seem to have put a bit of effort into the food side of things. Uh, but yeah, that, it's something I've been trying to put a bit of thought into and it's partially what pushed me to ask you guys on a previous stream about any books or resources you've looked at around game design and trying to learn a bit more about other people's perspectives on this and um, read about other people's thought processes as they go through thinking about these issues and these concepts because I, I feel like that's something that I would benefit from is seeing other people's ideas around this and seeing how I might understand them and do things with those ideas. Uh, right, so back to the stationers at hand now that we've got our blocks. Yeah, okay, bro, and the, the dried game meat and cooked game meat have such good buffs that they did kind of make other foods moot in Icarus. So if I want to move a lot of this stuff into an area, what I might do is put another door here that goes into a separate little room. It'll be like my logic and computing room. put this on the inside so that I've got walls to build on. In fact, I could make this room go all the way down to the end here where the pipe control is. Yeah. It means I got heaps of space for playing around with cabling and other bits and pieces. Because that's the other thing I have to figure out is how I'm going to wire up this place for all the different functions that I want to include in it. Yeah, it's my utility closet. <laughs> It'll be where all the various bits come in. It could be that this is where I want to bring the main power cable in uh, and then have a bunch of transformers running off that cable to the different functions that are in here. I do recall one about why MMOs need to introduce different currencies all the time, which had a lot of good information about getting the feeling of progression. Yeah, extra credits I used to watch a lot. Um, haven't liked a lot of their more recent stuff, but I used to watch it a lot. I think that was kind of where a lot of this... It sparked a bit of, a bit of my interest and um, desire to learn more about these sorts of topics. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, let's go check out the power output during this storm. Hopefully I don't die as I jump off the top here. Yeah, the change to being all about uh, being a history channel wasn't really to my interest. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Well, that's problematic. That's my thrust. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad my thrusters were strong enough. But I really want to see how much out power up we get from this. There's my wind turbine. I want to see it. I can see and hear it. <laughs> that 
does not feel safe. <laughs> well, considering the... I don't think the solar panels are outputting anything at the moment. My potential is 14 kilowatts. So that's, that's probably mostly this wind turbine, and that's outputting three, time, three and a bit times what my solar panels can output at their best. Those five little turbines and that one big one. And my batteries are completely charged now. Kind of cool that I'm in a sort of dead zone here. Oh, that looks really cool. Uh, no, Lord Lunder, that's not what's being utilised. The 14 kilowatts is what's being generated. The 1.35 kilowatts was what being what was being used. Jetpack nope, bad idea, bad idea. Should have put my jetpack power up before I tried to jump up there. Is there a stop? Jetpack on. Jetpack on. Uh, so if we have a look at the thing again, you can see the actual is what's being used. The potential is what could be used, and so that's the 14 kilowatts that's being generated. That's pretty impressive. Uh, does mean that my batteries are 100% fully charged and... There's not much I can do with them at the moment. Nor can I do any building at the moment. So I'm going to go inside. Where I can make some more building materials. And maybe another battery. That will probably be finished just as the storm ends. Gold, copper, silicon, and stellite. Where's my stellite at? Oh. My stellite is in a machine. It's in this machine. I'll just... I'm going to stick with just one more battery. So many materials. The funnel generator during a sandstorm must be the most terrific place in space. In station is. I think... I think, unfortunately, those... Those sorts of turbine generators, I don't think they work particularly well in storms. They might do, because there is a... There is a genuine push, but... If you notice when you're outside in these storms, there's none of those particle effects of uh, gas moving. 
I think it's a separate system that they use for the storms and the general atmospheric changes, which is why you have two different types of turbines. Because one is affected by this type of wind and one is affected by the other type of wind. I only turned off that... Wait, I didn't even turn off the stacker. <laughs> I, remember, I turned off the tool maker because I'm like, how often do I need? I even use this? I don't need to leave it on. But the other ones I'll leave on because I do use them enough. It seems silly to turn them off. I suspect storms are a separate type of wind because to make them into pressure wind would do very bad things to performance, as well as being rather odd. Oh, I need to turn it on. There we go. 14 kilowatts going in. And the storm just died. <laughs> I got a few seconds of power <laughs> to the new battery. Uh... Oh, well. It was something. Would have gotten a few seconds more if I'd remembered that I had to turn the thing on. Uh, is inside breathable? Yes, I think so. I think inside is breathable. Uh, I think there's enough oxygen in there. Jetpack on. Alright, so... This is my utilities room. Or do I want to make most of this lower floor the utilities room? Maybe that's what I want to do. So I can have kind of separate rooms. Actually, I'm being I'm being weird about this. I need to think about this a bit more in a bit more of a structured way. So. What are the things Stationeers requires of me? I have a kitchen. I need to have a kitchen. Ah, uh, yeah, there is a fuse system. Um, I need to have a kitchen. I want to have a little living area. And I want to have... I guess... What is this there? What even what what even is there? <laughs> bedroom. So we'll have a bedroom, living room, um, kitchen. I suppose I could have a medical facility with the sleeper and the cryo tubes. Uh What else is there? Disco area. Oh right, because of the the sound blocks and programmable things. Yep. Um, I I guess that could be part of the living area. Maybe. I think the suit equipment room would be part of the medical room. So maybe the medical room can be down here alongside the 
utilities area. A few windows and a few walls. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is you walk through here, you've got the Utilities room on the right, which you'll mostly not need to go into. And then you can go on the walk around here to get to the medical room. And then you can walk upstairs and get to the kitchen and living area. Because it's going to have the higher ceilings. Floors. Actually, for ceilings. Do I want to use wall types for ceilings? I don't think I do. Uh, I think I need to go back and get the different type of wall. Jetpack. I don't know which type of wall I want to use for the ceilings, though. Because the floors will probably be like... Um, where have I got some floors? I'll probably do a lot of flooring of this type, the graded type. But I might use some other bits and pieces. I think... I'm actually going to want... Was it geometric I decided on? I don't think it was. Padded? No, not padded. Padded's too thick. Flat. I think it was flat ones. Steel sheets. Yeah, like, I think that sort of thing is a nice ceiling. Uh, sadly, Griswold, no, you cannot make a... a pool anymore. I was hoping I could, but people reminded me that I can't. So many flat wall kits. Um, it used to have liquid water. Now it just has liquids in pipes, which is really, under most circumstances, no different to gases in pipes. So it doesn't it sort of feels like almost Yeah. I I miss that they I think it's sad that they no longer have um the ability to make pools. What about the trader area plus rocket? Well I figure the trader area plus rocket will be outside. Or off some sort of tunnel from the main bit, maybe. Yeah. The trader area shouldn't... Because it needs to have, like, a landing platform. I suppose I could have a pressurized tube leading to it with an airlock just out to the actual platform. Um, 
So maybe I could do that as a, a thing that either comes off the end here or the end over here. Maybe going out that way, out this way. Have it come off the upper floor. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't need to build it, I just need to have a door to go to it. Uh, sadly, the traders won't be going through the tube, so having flashing lights and other things to make them, uh... <laughs> to, to scare them into being... into never coming back is probably not my... not going to work. Weirdly, the traders can land underground with a hole to get there, though. That's quite cool. I'm not planning on taking advantage of that here, but that's quite cool. Quite cool indeed. Quite a few, actually. I need to wait. Just getting distracted by my dog snoring beside me. Magically powered force transporter. Yes. Do, I can't remember. Do the, do the traders actually even... I think Capac only managed to call a trader once. I can't remember how they arrive. I'm assuming it's just some sort of teleportation mechanic. As opposed to their ship moving. But I can't remember. Don't know why I want all these tomato seeds. I've got a lot of them now. I suppose if anything ever goes wrong. I have no idea what it costs for a large fridge. I'm not worried about setting something like that up until I get the rest of this area built. I don't want to build a fridge and then have to move it. Yeah, shuttle lands there, appear outside of it and interact, interact with them. So the shuttle has no collision then. Jetpack on. Or pathfinding, it just kind of travels from space down to your pad and then back up, I guess. I think for ceiling, I'm happy with two-tone. Let's go with two-tone.
Are there random events in this game? Uh, other than the weather, no. No, there are not random events in this game. I'm outside of... In games where you have such control over what happens, uh, like as in your building is really down to you doing a good job with the building, I think having random events actually detracts from the experience. Because it then stops being about your engineering because you can't actually stop the things from happening. Yeah, Leona, you're, you're right. The traders, what they offer is kind of random. The weather is random. But I think random events a la RimWorld. I, I personally don't think they add to the experience in games like Space Engineers, Stationeers, survival games in general. They're more of a colony sim thing where you... The whole idea is the game is set up around mitigating those events and what you can do to mitigate them. And that's where the interest comes in. I feel like for me, having some like random power blowout that I have no ability to control would probably take away some of the fun for me. I'd certainly hate it with a passion in a game like Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, most random events in Station is are entirely the fault of the player, and probably should be. All I really need to decide right now is where I want windows and where I want walls. Once I've placed all of those things, I can pressurize this space and mess around with the internal walls afterwards, put in internal doors, that sort of thing. Um, I've been having some interesting thoughts on random events in games after playing the multiplayer RimWorld save with Capac and Wasted and how frustrated we were by the end with the rate of death of our colonists, the rate of limbs blowing off, all these sorts of things and it kind of being at a level where we felt like we had no control we had no way of mitigating these things it was just you're going to die. And as someone who's openly said that I don't really enjoy the Game of Thrones books, um, the idea of my, my favourite characters dying just takes some of the fun out of it and takes a lot of my emotional investment out of it. Um, I've now... I've been playing just for my own fun. What the Jet heck have I built on. that for? I've been playing just for my own fun some um, RimWorld with some of those settings modified to try and give me a a story where I feel like I can save my pawns, but if I do something stupid, they'll still die. And it's been so much more fun. Easier, absolutely. But so much more fun. Oh, I remember. I put that down because I was, um, yeah, doing wiring and stuff. Yes, it was to put in that vent. That is right. So I'm thinking the door out... If you hit escape, open the menu, open incidents... Okay, here we go. So here are the incidents that they planned to have in the game. 
burn random cable, break pipe, solar flare, fungus infected some plants, device fault, canister issues. Oh no, canister dropped. Oh, like an unknown signal. Grounder attack. Power surge. Solar flare heat. I think some of these could work. Um, like solar flares could work if there's a way of shielding your equipment and giving you some sort of ability to prep and prepare, like mitigate in, a, in an effective way. But this is actually bringing up another topic I've been thinking about a lot lately. Which is... Why is weather bad in games? And can any of you guys think of a game that has weather in it? Where the weather is genuinely a big part of the experience that's fun. Um, I think Station Ears and Icarus are reasonably good examples of where weather is interesting. Um, weather can be interesting in RimWorld. And that's because weather in both of these games isn't something that stops your gameplay dead and just makes you wait for the most part. But some of Icarus is that. It's just now that this bad weather is here, I just have to wait it out. Forcing a player to just wait something out is not, in my mind, desirable gameplay. But I would like to try and build this thing, so I should probably stop thinking about game design and start thinking about how to lay this space out. Let's go wall here and here. Because we've got glass immediately on the other side. I put two windows in there, so I might do the same on this floor. Wall, wall. No, weather in station is, I think, adds something. Um, there's a there was a thing on um, the Draconis servers, which I've used elsewhere as well. Uh, where the storms in Space Engineers would give increased power output for your wind turbines. And you'd get so little at the rest of the time that you kind of were waiting for those storms to happen. The storms were actually a good thing. When the storm hit, you were like, yes, I'm getting power. Finally, I'm able to produce a bit of materials for my next stage. This is, this is kind of fun because I'm able to do something during the storm. But then... 99% of the rest of the weather in Space Engineers is, oh my god, I can't see. I just have to wait. So... Yeah, I think... I think... When I was, I was thinking about this quite a bit in the last few weeks, I'm like, why is weather so broken in games? And the reason is, weather is something that is so uncontrollable to us as at a human scale that all we try and do is bunker down and wait. And what I was thinking about is, how can you make bunkering down and waiting an interesting mechanic? What, how can you make that waiting interesting? Because if you can make that waiting interesting, then you can make weather much more interesting. <laughs> uh, Gabe Rabin, you should, you should hear Aussies. We're so much worse talking about the weather, largely because we wait for weather to be good before doing anything. Because we know it will eventually come, so we just wait it out. We're like, uh, the weather's so bad today, I don't want to do that. Knowing that in a few days it'll be good again. Or at least... That was the case before the current horrible knowing that in a couple of days it'll be raining again. English style weather. 
What are you doing, dog? Charlie, come. Yes. Sit. Yes, good girl. Now I'll let you out. Plus these other hydrophobic versions of Fritz. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Where am I at? The local feeling is if you're not willing to do it in the rain, you're not willing to do it. Jetpack on. Yeah, I... It's something that uh, as Aussies we're not really that accustomed to dealing with. In most parts of Australia at least. Yeah, Tufty, that's kind of a that's a nice kind of succinct way of saying what I was trying to say, which is weather in games restricts what you can do instead of making it so it adds something else something new that you can do. All it does is restrict action. It doesn't add new actions. And that's where I think there's a tiny little window into the possibilities of what weather could do with the increased power output of the storms with the wind turbines uh, in both this and Space Engineers because the weather gives me something new I can do because I've got more power. So I'm opening up new options while restricting others, which makes the gameplay move and change over time which is interesting rather than just frustrating yeah takari the the Lightning thing isn't really an issue with weather systems in Space Engineers. It's an issue with a random timer till you get killed by a non-random event. Which is a separate bad gameplay design issue. Um, but yeah, I was I was just thinking about weather so much because it's in it's been it was added to Space Engineers and I was thinking about the new player tutorials that I'm currently in the process of writing some scripts for and how I wanted to go about explaining why as a new player you should turn weather off uh, because it doesn't add anything to your game experience all it does is detract from it in a quite literal sense in that weather in space engineers just stops you from doing things um, and so therefore for a new player don't have it because you won't know what you're missing out on um, and you don't need that when you're already trying to get over the learning bumps or cliffs. So I, I think um, I, I think the way weather is approached, particularly in survival games, needs there needs to be a bit of a mindset shift in how it's implemented. Um, I know I know I don't have the answers to it, but I, I think where my head's starting to get to is where maybe these things could be improved. I just realized I have used standard walls on my ceiling in here. And it looks quite nice. Hmm. Oh well. Um, like I was thinking about Stardew Valley and its implementation of weather. So in Stardew Valley, on rainy days, you get to do more stuff because your crops are already watered for you in the early game. And that adds something and makes you look forward to the rainy days. Um, on 
specific weather for specific days, you get different fish. That mechanic I'm not so sure about. Because it means... You have to wait for a random event before you can do a thing that's related to collecting a thing, but then it doesn't... It's not needed for you to do those... Like, for much of the story, it's not actually required. Um, so it's not all that bad, but I can see how you could implement a system like that in a bad way. From a player perspective, because it would restrict you too much and make you wait around for something that you have no control over and lead to frustration. <laughs> Should have padded walls in the medical room or the people upstairs might hear someone screaming or something. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to plan for that. <laughs> Since I'm the only one here. Feels like that could be um, setting myself up for failure. I'll just get two full stacks and then we'll get these ceilings built. So, Icarus, I think, has a lot of potential with its weather system because it was started, like, the game seems to have been built with weather in mind um, and all that sort of stuff. The... The things that I feel it doesn't implement them right for my style of play, and I that's not for everyone, but for my style, are uh, that it sort of gamifies the weather a little bit too much with being able to know exactly when the bad bits of the storms are there. But then it does good things in that when the storm is there, you can see the effects of the weather trees fall down, this sort of thing. I don't think they need the HUD element for weather. I think what they should have done was implement the weather prediction stuff very differently because then you'd need to be watching the world around you more rather than watching your HUD element. And if you're watching the world around you, you'll see the trees fall over, you'll see the effects on the water, you'll see the effect in the sky, you'll notice those things because those things become important. And during those storms, you'll be watching out for, is there lightning? Do I need to do this to put out the fires? Is there damage to my house that I need to repair? So you're doing a new action during the storm. And that does show some of the potential of weather being good. Uh, no, Ranger, this is not default setting Mars. Uh, my Martian atmosphere here is entirely pollutant. Uh, do I want to... I'm going to go monochrome panels up here and see how I like that. Um, once the new room is complete, do you open the door to equalize the pressure? And if, if you do that, does that not damage the other rooms with a low pressure and kill the plants? That potentially would if I did it that way. My plan is to vacuum out this volume, make it complete vacuum. Once it's complete vacuum, pump some fresh CO2 in here, get it up to probably not the same pressure as the rest of the base, but at least a reasonable pressure and reasonable temperature, then open the door and equalize. And I just realized, once I've decided where the windows are, I can put an outer skin on the building. Uh, and with that outer skin in place, as long as I don't remove a window, I won't depressurize this thing. So I'll be able to work on these walls and I can change up what panels I have on the ceiling and stuff like that if I put that outer skin on first.
So that's what I'm thinking. We'll have windows there, 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 and there, and then two windows in the ceiling. And I didn't bring enough walls! Because <sighs> I forgot that I was going to put windows in the ceiling. Ah, oh, that's true, Eliana. That's probably a good idea. I probably should just put a double window and have a window skin on the outside too. In fact, I think it'll look nicer if I do once I put the other skins on. So yeah, maybe that's what I do. While while that area is turning to vacuum, I'll do the outer skin on the building so that it's got that safety net so I can work on the inner stuff as well. Which means I'm going to need a lot of walls, so I may well just leave the walls being made <laughs> for a bit. Yeah, Ranger, uh, at the end of every stream that Capac and I did together, or most of the streams anyway, we tried to make cannons. Uh, actually, we started doing that later on, once we had a bit of a better handle on the game. But we... Um, we did make many a cannon to fire ourselves, fire stuff at ourselves, and do other silly things like that, because it was quite fun messing around with that system, because it's not a system you can mess around with in many games. Right, I'm going to need to do some smelting soon. You can double up the windows, but the hex shapes are off. Oh, I bet that bugs a few people. Oh yeah, they will be off. Because the hex start, like, that shape on that side. And then on this side of the window. Why am I doing this on that one? We can look here. So that side looks like that. And that side is the other bit. Oh, why would they do that? Why not just shift the texture a tiny bit so that it cuts it straight down the middle? So that it's easy. Because the top and bottom are the same. Are they? Or that is that a row off? No, they're the same. Oh, that's... Why? <laughs> I guess no one really thought about it. <sighs> I am right now building up the materials so I can pressurize the next part of my base. Yeah. You can... The rotation issue is you have no idea which way around it is until it's built. So you got to hope that you get it right and then does it keep it doesn't even keep the same rotation does it oh my shed just got so cold with Charlie leaving the door open it's 12 degrees right now and 12 degrees sitting at a desk is cold uh, I'll just leave that running this is all I need for this bit, although maybe I won't leave it running. Hang on. Uh, I might make some more steel sheets. Yeah, the trouble is, if you place all the windows at once and get it wrong, you've then got to place them all again and hope you get it right. Jetpack on. Uh, windows. Then we're good.
How will I get in and out while it's becoming vacuum? Good point. That's actually a good reason to decide where this bridge to the trader landing spot Jet is going to be. Do I want it to come off the living level? I don't think I do, actually. This is the more interesting aspect onto the base, isn't it? Because we've got the solar panels, we've got the wind turbines. I don't really need to look at the production facility, so maybe I'll bring it off here. the middle. So I have like a glass bridge that comes out here. And if I build an airlock on that, I can then get in and out and check the pressure and stuff. Yeah, it is a sad part about Station is that once you've done everything and you're happy with what you've built, you've kind of done everything. Um, it's partially why I'm thinking... Oh, I need to fix that cable before I do this. Or do I? Yeah, I do. It's partially why I'm thinking when I have got this base to a level that I'm kind of happy with... I will probably change up to a different game and then maybe a, leave it a month or so before I try and bring Capac into it. So that I'm not... Um, so that I've, the challenges are fresh again. Yes, Crow, that was um, quite loud. All right, I'll do for now. As long as it doesn't hide it, it's all good. Uh, yeah, going to somewhere like Europa or Vulcan or something like that. I think I'd like to try and come up with a bit of a custom challenge for Capac and I to face. Something that's a bit different. I liked... I do like the... Power low. All pollutant air thing, because it did force me to do gas capture off my furnaces, which was something new to Hydration me. Critical. Um, yeah, I think that's far enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I'm I've been I'll have a bit of a think before I do that stuff with him. Like before I do a series with him about what else I could add that might make it a bit more interesting, make it so there are new challenges, new problems for me to run into. Yeah. I was thinking again, doing the all pollution atmosphere, maybe having it slightly higher pressure. And I do like the idea of fairly wide temperature swings as well as another thing to spice it up. Lower light levels. Yeah, if I if I increase the pressure of the atmosphere, I probably should reduce the amount of solar power you get so that you're kind of forced to balance between the two. There's not one that's genuinely better. It's kind of a mix. Yeah, I, I am considering station air difficulty. I just don't know how angry Capac will be made by it. <laughs> <laughs> Although I suppose uh, I 
reckon I know enough now in space in stationers that I could probably manage stationer difficulty. You just need to make a pressurized room, like just even a little box that you can pressurize. And that's it. And if you have a piping system, you can get in there, turn it to vacuum, pressurize it to the point you can open your helmet, and then open your helmet, eat, drink, close your helmet and walk back out as a kind of a stopgap thing to do at the beginning. Okay, that needs to get colder. Huh. Mustn't be losing much heat outside. Come on. It's fine for now. And this thing's already flashing errors. So, need to build another... Um, airlock. Uh, can you make corrosive slash acidic atmo? I don't think so. The atmospheres have other ways they can be nasty through heat and stuff like that. But I want to avoid super hot atmosphere because I don't want to force us to stay underground for extended periods as I don't think that's great from a streaming point of view. I think that could be quite dull. Forcing us to stay underground and limit the times we're able to do stuff I think could slow things down to a point that might not actually be very good. Any more kit balls? I think having just, I like what I'd like to look at is maybe making it hot enough during the day that you can still be outside in the basic suit, but you'll burn through power a bit more. So power becomes a little bit harder to deal with and you want to push towards getting the good batteries earlier. Um, that could be enough to add something without going too far. I've, I've made custom planets in this before. I have no troubles with being able to do that. I The the Europa that Capac and I played on was custom. That's why it had the uh, Lulan style wrecks and stuff. But what I'd like to do is be able to make it so if once we get to the hard suit, we, we don't have to worry about some of that stuff as much because... It, constantly having to deal with that stuff the whole way through your game does tend to become a bit tiresome. Alright, let's make a couple of doors. Kit door. Now. Oh. I may I think I'll just make this a manual airlock for now. I might... Yeah, I'll go to the third door for the thing. Yeah, the Lulan style um, exploration thing is good, but it's also real bad. Um, it was it was nice being able to explore a little bit, but there's there's not enough variability in what you find. Uh, and the performance hits are pretty nasty. And it does make things... It does make some aspects of the game a bit too easy with the stuff that you can find. Like, Capac and I found RTGs. 
And so it's like, oh. If we used these, we would completely negate all power issues for ourselves forever. And power is one of the biggest fun challenges in Stationers. So we were like, yeah, we're not going to use those. Like, they were going to make it easy enough that even Capac agreed, yeah, we shouldn't be using those. I mean, I did have to tell him a few times why, but he did eventually <laughs> submit to... <laughs> submit that... Uh, agree that it was a better idea. Well, that's annoying. I wanted to have a glass door on the entryway to this thing. Uh, but I put the power through the corner. Alright, let's do this vaguely properly then. Uh... start with that. I don't have enough cable. Dang it! Let's bring it along the bottom here then instead of partially along this block. Yeah, Capac <laughs> didn't help the performance side of things by exploring, but that's that's exactly why I added those to Europa, because I was like this is this is an element of gameplay that Capac really enjoys. I'm going to try and add this to a different environment because the Lulan breathable atmosphere very drastically changes the gameplay in Station Ears in a way that I wasn't keen on uh, doing because it was going to make the survival aspect a little too easy. Just enough. Up. Let's give some power. Cool. Now I can put my door in. Uh, yeah, manual doors will work. So I wanted a big glass door at this end and then I was going to stick with the standard ones down but this airlock because otherwise the door will stick out past the edge of the block and look weird yeah suppose you could try demolishing every ruin as you go along but again I don't I don't think that makes for 
particularly exciting gameplay either, because demolishing the ruins takes a lot of time. What I was actually thinking of doing was... And at the time I'd actually tried to do it, I just... I don't think I actually got it right. What I was trying to do was make it so that the... Um, ruins were much more rare. Which would potentially limit their performance impact as well. go. That will be the airlock. Uh, the reason I need this corridor before I do the big room is because it's going to be connected to it. And I need an airlock to be able to get inside there that's a separate airlock to the one that gets me inside this bit. Otherwise, the two pre atmospheres will have to mix. And I do not want that. So I gotta make this airlock first. Which means I need more copper and gold for the heavy cable to run out there to get the power into it. off this other thing that I don't need anymore. Where are my wire cutters there? Hey, Elvaro Bob. How's it going? Uh, yeah, Com Warrior, this is an advanced airlock. I already have one, and that's exactly what I would build. Uh, it's coming inside because I need more cable. Uh, I do not have much gold. That's annoying. Heavy cable. Oh, you can at least get 36 of them. Uh, I haven't done any more IC stuff today. I decided I wanted to get more of the base built. Because unfortunately the stuff I wanted to do is not possible, so I will um, toy with that side of things later. Should probably harvest these before they rot on the vine. So, come worry, I'm not putting an airlock between these rooms. This room is not going to be airlock separated from this one out here. I don't want an airlock there. I'm not going to have an airlock there, so I'm not going to build an airlock there. Um, that's why I need an extra airlock to go outside, so I can go outside, leave this space, go outside, come back in there without having some temporary airlock in place that I don't need. That's why.
yes, you could build an airlock between the two, but I don't want to. Because that gets really annoying really fast. Oh, I think I just made that all right quicker. Oh, well. Oh, I suppose I can eat some before I go. Do do do. Have I got enough cable now? Just also make sure I've got all the bits I need. Uh, so the bits I need for the airlock. I do not need to carry that. Those can stack. Do not need these anymore for the moment. Active vents. Passive vents. I need a console. I thought I had a spare console somewhere. Console. Uh, what else do I need? Advanced airlock thing, which means I'm probably going to need to go get more gold because I think both of those things require some gold. Consoles. Yep. All right. Let's go smelt some steel and some gold. So I need both. Uh, hang on. Jetpack on. What do these need? Yeah, it's plastic sheets. Okay, let's put the plastic sheets into these and actually close off this space. And realise that I missed a spot. That is a good reason to do that. I thought I had it, just when I came back to try and fix it, I, for some reason, was blind and couldn't see the bit that I'd missed. So I think I, th I, think I remembered it being on the wrong side. There's a lot of building to do for this. It'd be kind of cool once I've got all of it pressurized so that I can move around, build stuff inside, and play around with all of that without having to go out again. For a while. Oh wait, I don't want to do that yet, do I? So that's going to make cabling a bit of a pain. Much easier if I can see it all. Uh, I didn't put much stuff in the lockers above the shelves, no. That was all stuff that I didn't expect to require for a while, so I was like my old suit and stuff like that.
Oh, Kali Dokali. So, I want to make some steel first up. One, two, three, and coal. One, two, three, and coal. Let's grab another coal so I can put another bit on there. And that'll do. See you, Gollum. Yes, uh, the trader has to walk the plank. Or I have to walk the plank to get to the trader. Should give me a supply of steel that will last a little while. I hope. And hopefully the temperature will hold up for that much to be processed. And then I should end up with enough. There should be enough residual heat to smelt the rest of this gold down. that pressure <laughs> um, yeah I'm sure there's clever stuff that can be done with the integrated chip programming and the furnace I kind of like manually doing the furnace stuff though I find it fun That is all my gold. Uh, anything else I should smelt? I think there's anything else I should smelt. Moment. Will it manage to process this iron? It's going to get too cold before it does. No, no, that's good. I think the I think my iron supplies on the shelves were getting a little bit low, so I thought I'd do that. Uh, yeah, it's a bit too cool for silicon now. I've got a fair amount of copper on the shelves. I guess I can do more copper since I'm here. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of glass. I, I will potentially need more silicon, but I think I've still got a bit stacked up there. And from memory, silicon requires a fairly high heat. Yeah, 900 Kelvin. And I think I've just about dropped below that. Yep. 
Alright, let's get these gases out. Hey, Ostoga. Yeah, get all this. I don't. I don't think I need to do the silicon just yet. I'll. I'll wait. Hopefully, that small amount of gold I did will last me through to get the stuff I need for building this airlock. Try and get most of this gas out before I walk away. So I can turn these things off. Not that I really need to. I've got so much power. But waste not, want not, and all that. Oh, yeah, that's enough. That's definitely enough. Jetpack on. Let's get the heavy cable running out there. Ready for my area power control. How has the prodding of Capac come? Um, I haven't really been prodding him for this lately. There have been enough other things that I've been prodding him for that I decided not to push. <laughs> push on this front at this stage. I'm sure it will come. And he'd already ag and he'd agreed to it. It just was timing that we were going to work out. But he'd actually agreed to play this again once I decided it, once it was ready for it. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but as I said earlier, I kind of like the idea of taking a little bit of a break from Stationers before I come back with Capac, so that I've got... So that I'm more likely to make some mistakes, really. Um... I think I've got everything I need. Area power controller and that needs some of this gold. There's my stack of ingots I made. Suppose we should put some of this away. I do like the uh, ingot dropping from the ceiling thing. <laughs> that was always fun uh, in our last go up series. Ingot rain. Uh, yeah, Takari, that's one of the things I've been poking Capac to do is a bit more of um, a bit more of recording time for doing things on our shared channel. Which includes stuff like Seven Days to Die. One console coming up. Uh, no, power controller. Wait, do I have a power controller over here? I think I do. Yes, I do. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna do some IC10 stuff and then I got distracted by 
building. <laughs> so I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I'm being opportunistic about it. I'm like, if I come across a thing that feels like a good project for it, then I'll do it. But I'm trying not to spend... Yeah. Balance. Finding balance. That's what I'm trying to do. So we've got our power controller. We need a battery. Which I can probably just use a large battery for. Yeah. Power controller with battery goes to console. I need a sensor, which I don't think I have one of. Uh, and I've got my passive vents, my active vents. I've got some pipes. I've got some cable. I've got enough plastic for making the walls. And that should I think I think that's everything I need. What about the stuff for the doors? What do the doors require? I think I've got the stuff for that too. Let's go do this thing. Um, yeah, actually, I was thinking that's not a bad thought. Do a, um, do a solar tracking script at some point. Although maybe, <laughs> maybe that's something I should do once I'm playing this co-op, so I can annoy Capac with how long it takes me to set up the tracking array. That sounds like it could be an option. Oh, I'm sure Capac will annoy me, but uh, ignore me and annoy me. Actually, now that I've said that accidentally out loud. Um... But he'll also be wondering why it's taking me so long to do a thing. I did not bring my disc. That's annoying. Uh, yeah, that's all, isn't it? I think. Jetpack on. Oh no! Uh, rats. I'm gonna need a lot of pipe. <laughs> so I can't put a passive vent on here, can I? Unless I... Oh yeah, I can. Glass takes a passive vent. Cool. Alright. We will do that. There we 
we go. Piping done. Now for cables. to build the door welding torch and plastic sheets crowbar and glass and then we're done light on Yeah, weirdly, I didn't have to swap the window for a wall thing. I thought I would have to, but yeah. Apparently, it takes it now. Uh, I don't, I don't need to start using the thing to pressurize it as yet. Bed rat. Uh, and I'll, given the size of the space, I will definitely be adding an extra vent or twelve <laughs> to try and depressurize it a bit faster given how long it took the other space to get to vacuum. go. Power to the system. There's no point doing anything with it just yet because I need to actually close off all the other room before I do anything more with this but I will need to remember to bring that disc over. But we have a separate airlock. Jetpack on. And one I can at least manually control for now. Now the building begins. Much building. Oh, I don't want this to be a window anymore. That should be a composite wall. Should it? Did I just mess that up? Jetpack on. Nope. This one should be turned into a window. I knew I'd done something like that. Okay, so now I'm going to need to go down to... No, wait, lots of these require steel. I think I'm going to need more plastic. Thanks so much, Orsa. Thank you so much for 10 more gift subs. <laughs> and the 60 you've given. Uh, thank you very much for all that and letting me do this thing as much as I do. Alright, I think with this stuff, I will go down to the furnace and I will specifically smelt a whole bunch of silicon. Jetpack on. So it looked like I delivered enough steel for a while, so let's get some silicon done. Do, 
do output is down let's get some gases in here get some silicon queued up We're going to need a lot of plastic and a lot of glass. And I reckon this will last me through the build. So that'll be like 400. Blam. There wasn't, yeah, there wasn't anything else I really noticed that I wanted, so I'll just get this silicon. <laughs> so let's see, you cost me so much time with all the games you've lured me into, I don't have time left to spend money on anything else. Oh, hopefully you've enjoyed the time you've been spending on the games I've lured you into. Um... Uh, let's just do all the silicon. Why not? Uh, I have not yet built the recycler and centrifuge. No. It's still on the list. The uh, rather long to-do list. I'm just going to leave the gases in there. I'll deal with them later. Turn you on. Turn you off. Turn you off. With all their power, how come the lights are off? I don't know. Put the lights on. <laughs> I think the lights were off because I kept running out of power. Before, but... Let's see. Let's see if I start running out of power. If I start running out of power and notice it, then this was a mistake. Oh, there's, there's no growing pile of stuff to be recycled. I haven't messed up producing things. This, when I demolish this stuff, yes, the list of things to be recycled will be big. Maybe that's when I should do it, when I demolish all this bit. Yeah, also, I spent quite a long time building this furnace, so it should act as a fairly reasonable thing to just watch and do alongside, because you'll have plenty of time to muck around, because I was definitely talking about my plans and thoughts on what was good, bad, otherwise, about the things I was doing and the way I was doing them. And as you can see, it works. I'm sure there are better ones out there in terms of one-click use, but I kind of like the mini-game of balancing pressure and temperature. Alright, we got a couple more plastic sheets here. That's it. So let's get plastic sheets first. Leave that running for a bit. I'm just going to check outside to see whether I have a few more of those bits and pieces in those cupboards. I don't think I do. No, I really don't. I've only got a few wrecked smelting attempts and they were from very early. I haven't failed any of my, uh, my recent ones. Uh, that does not look like there's anything there. Those are iron sheets. Nope. Nothing. Alright, just gotta make it all up. That's a lot of plastic.
yeah, those six lumps of slag have been there for uh, actually potentially months at this stage. <laughs> That's why I'm not worried about them. Those I created ages ago, I haven't made new ones, so it's not a growing list, it's just a list that's at this length. <laughs> and has been there for a long, long, long time. That, that, that was the bit I was saying, I was like, no, 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 there's no growing to it. There's a list, it's just not growing. It's just the growth bit that I objected to. <laughs> I don't need to carry those. Uh, I'll keep the kit, the wall kits on me. Just in case I need to redo a bit. And I'll bring that disc. Although maybe I don't want to automate the airlock just yet. Because having a manual does allow it to be much easier to use the airlock to evacuate the space. So I'll, I'll leave it as manual for now. But I do have to enclose the space first. Uh, no, Chillerus. I am not aware of a game called Foundry. I've not come across it. just had a weird thought I was also was just saying that um and a lot, of, a lot of other people have said you can just set up printers so that you can dial in a specific amount that you want click print and you'll get that specific amount I am fairly confidently going to say that I am I am never going to build something of that level of automation in station is the barrier to making something like that is quite a long time spent writing the scripts for someone like me. I'm sure other people can write it very quickly, but for writing the scripts to do those things would take me a long time. Um, so I'm almost certainly not going to do that. But it did make me think, I wonder how much of this stuff I'll either choose to do while playing with Capac or maybe even get him to do because he's actually spent more time in software development classes than I ever have so in theory if he learned anything from those classes he should be able to pick this up faster than I can uh Mike I'm why did I lose power for a second there That was weird. I think Capac has the brain for it, but you have the patience for it. Yeah, it's true. Oh yeah, Capac could might enjoy messing around with the music side of stuff. Uh, how the Lego setup is coming along though. That is almost ready to go. I just need to pick a time. As much as anything, I... I haven't set up any lights yet, but that doesn't take long. I need to set up a time and I need to sync the cameras and the microphones to each other. And that's going to take a while. Because of the way OBS works for that stuff. Uh, I think that might be enough glass, because the other side doesn't have that many windows. Let's see. Uh, that should be enough steel, I th think. Or actually, let's get a few more steel sheets. 
Um, for want of a better term, Poc, I want lip sync. So I, I want all of the three to be perfectly in sync with one another because the three sources won't be. The There'll be a delay, a bigger delay on the NDI source from the old mobile phone I'm using as my overhead camera than there is on my A7S II that I'm using as my main camera, my front facing camera. And there'll be a different delay on both of those to the delay on my lav mic. So all three, I suspect the lav mic will have the least delay. And then I'll have to stagger, I'll have to bring it to the longest delay, which will probably be the NDI source. And then also sync the other camera up to that. And yeah, ND, um, OBS's way of doing that is not particularly helpful. From my memory of messing with it. Uh, it's something I'd like to <laughs> go over to Capax and fix his sync because his webcam is not synced with his voice and it drives me nuts every time I watch him <laughs> so Pock, yes you could get away without syncing the audio to the MDI but if I don't sync those two then the picture in picture that shows me will be out of sync with the overhead camera so my hands will be moving at different times and that would upset me So, to my mind, they do need to be all synced to each other. Otherwise, it'll bug me. These... I actually don't know what the sync delay is. That's part of it. I don't know what the delays are between the sources. But I think it's less than... Less than two seconds, almost certainly. But... Potentially less than a second. But yeah, that's that's kind of it. Once I've done that and put some lights up, it is really picking a day. So really, as much as anything, it is just picking a day. That's what I gotta do. Um, which I'm tempted to do in place of... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which stream it'll replace when it when they come in as semi-regular things. I don't know what times to do it, what time will work best. Because it's a different environment down in the garage as well. So time of day has a bit more of an impact in how cold, hot, whatever it'll be. I like having high ceilings in my builds, Stellaris. I like living spaces to have higher ceilings because it feels better. where they are. I got a lot more plastic and glass than I needed. <laughs> At least for this part of the project. I obviously need heaps of it for the exterior. Before I try to pump the gas into this, I think I might cool it down this time rather than having to cool it down once I've pumped the gas in, because that took a lot of time and effort for the other part of the base. Okay. Glow. 
glass in, glass in, glass in. Glass in, glass in, glass in. Oh, you meant the building itself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I, because this is all over my um, furnace area. It needs to be tall. Light on. Because I needed the clearance for the giant tank underneath. <laughs> uh, that's my CO2 line. So I think what I will do. Let's remove that passive vent. Uh, put a wall down here and have it pop out this side instead. Huh. Would a turbo pump move the gas out of this space faster than an active vent? with the pressure only being one kilopascal. Yeah. I reckon it probably is worth a try. With enough vents, yes. Uh, that's a good point. So, we are now airtight in here. Build this door, even though I don't need it. There you go. You can just as well have multiple active events. Yeah, I could have multiple active events, but what I was thinking was passive events are cheap. Um, so I thought I'd... And it's a different way of doing things. I've done the lots of, lots of active events thing before. Equally, I could have an active vent um, on the outside attached to lots of passive vents inside, so it's pulling from multiple spots as well. I did forget to change that one wall for a window, and I'm going to do that because that will annoy me. What have I done? Okay, I don't like the little panels on this high ceiling. I'm going to change all of them. Jetpack on. I can't believe I managed to do that. Um, box up. My feeling with the active vents versus passive vents thing, and I'm sure someone in chat can say whether this is likely to be true, um, is that sorry, the active vents versus turbo pump. The difference will come down to more about how much air is available to go into the system than which device you're using on the system. So what I mean by that is 
the pressure in here is very low. So... You need to have access to a lot of area to actually push a decent amount of that air out. The last little bits are really the hardest to get. I think I prefer that on this roof because it's so far away the lots of them looks a bit funny. Events also have a pressure cutoff. The Salatin is over 101 by default. Ah. Yeah, I figured turbo pumps would just keep pushing regardless, so that, that's why I was wondering whether they might end up being faster. Anyway, I'm going to try and empty this one out with the turbo pump and see how it goes. Turbo pump and put a bunch of passive vents in. I guess I should go around and just have a look to see whether I've stuffed up any other ones before I start working on properly pressurizing the space. Yeah, I think the little ones work for the close ceiling, but for the high ceiling it felt a bit weird. Though I have not matched all of these. Some of them are different. But they are internal ones, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, I think this feels better. Although I am kind of wishing I'd done these walls, because the walls have that little bit of depth to them. Whereas these panels are flat. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I can always change it once I put padding on the outside. It's fine. The turbo pump drains the air from the pipes and the passive vent equalizes the room pressure with the vacuum created in the pipe. But active vents pull the air from the room regardless of pipe pressure, which makes them more useful. It'll be an interesting test. I reckon with this I reckon it'd be interesting to find out with the same number of passive vents connected to the system. I wonder if there'd be a point where the turbo pump exceeds the passive, the active vent. See you, also. Because I'm, I'm suspicious there would be a point you'd get to. Jetpack on. So now I need passive vents, bunch of pipe turbo pump on the outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Yeah, outside. Turbo pump that I can put on the outside and a bunch of passive vents and a bunch of pipe. Oh yeah, I was still good. What I'm thinking is a an active vent connected to multiple passive vents versus a turbo pump connected to multiple passive vents. My guess was that the turbo pump system might 
be better. And I'm interested to kind of find out. I mean, the, the turbo pumps require specialty materials, so that immediately puts them in the not as good category. Yeah, so that's kind of, that was sort of the comparator that I was thinking might be interesting to do. Say, at what number of passive vents do you need for the turbo pump to be better? Or the other system to be better? And does it matter? Is there a point where there's a tip? Is there a tipping point that you reach? My feeling is there would be a tipping point, but... Mm -hmm. Could easily be wrong. Yeah, true. Turbo pumps do chew a bit of power. Since this is only a temporary setup, it's not as big a deal. You have turbo pumps for your greenhouse just to keep air flowing. Why do you need the air flowing in the greenhouse? Genuine question. Why would that need it to be a thing? Oh, to get the O2, to move the O2 out. I guess I'm just... <laughs> I'm working on the have a giant buffer system of things. Uh, what am I doing? Pipes. My system is inefficient, but... Uh, well, it's inefficient uh, once the buffer dies, but while the buffer's in place, it's really efficient. Yep, persistence, Nafu. That's the plan. That's why I need so many pipes. Yeah, that could be part of it as well, Astuga, that the passive vents just can't get stuff into the system fast enough um, for either an active vent or a passive or a um, turbo pump, especially in the low pressure I'm dealing with here. I am definitely not doing the comparison now. I'm just going to build a turbo pump system because why not do something different? Um, I'm not actually going to do any sort of va even vague test of this. I'm just doing it different because I should do it differently each time. Try not to do the same thing all the time because that's boring. The thing I'm thingoing about is, um, do I have a transformer? Should grab a transformer. Yeah, I think. That's exactly what I'm expecting, Ostoga. That the turbo pump will work. Um, the distribution of my passive fence is going to make the biggest impact. Which is why I made 10 of them. Jetpack on. Ow. Uh, 
Transformer. Jetpack low. Oh, right. Let's fix my jetpack up. Uh, that's nitrogen. That's the one I want. Let's turn you on. Wait a second. Jetpack critical. Hello. Just had a momentary pause where I was like, the smart tanks take higher pressure than the regular Jetpack ones, on. and I might have set this off the smart tank pressure of <laughs> capabilities. Just giving a bit of buffer zone with the pipes so that there's a bit of extra room to pressure into before it comes to Atmo. I don't think it matters, but maybe it does, so I figured why not do it. Because I know sometimes having a bit of buffer in this game helps make sure you've got enough time for the ticks to occur for things to equalize. Let's go inside. And I'm going to have to remove this whole system once it's been, once it's done its job. Create a few branching points for other ones to stick on. So that's one, two, three, four. And then I should try and get some upstairs, which means I'm going to need to put some walls down so I can attach the vents going around this way. pipe to achieve this. Go overreached a little bit just there. I'll move where I put those floors down. You know you could have just used your exterior walls since all of them face inwards. Um, no, they don't. I mean, you, you oh, you mean these exterior walls? Yeah, I could have. But that puts it near the edge, whereas I wanted to try and be in the center of the room so the gas could move from all directions towards the vents. Uh, I'm not sure how much of an impact that will make, but I think it will make an impact. Because one of the things that took so long last time was that I had minimal evacuation from this, like the stuff on the other side of this wall, and lots from down the bottom, so stuff had to travel through the corridor to get out, which made it hard to actually get it out.
That's exactly what I'm doing, Snafu. And I disagree. I think it will make a difference. Because the way the air particles move, they will be able to move into this cell from here, from here, from here, and from above. Whereas if I had it just on the wall, they've got to come from all the way over here to get to that wall. And I think there is a difference there. Oh, nuts, i got to put floors down here too. We got... Uh, I've got three more vents I can put on. Where shall I put them? Probably up the top here. So, I think I don't have quite enough pipe for what I wanted to do. Yeah, there'll do. I've got a vent outside. That's all good. You only need one vent for outside. Because the amount of gas that's coming out, the passive vent outside will easily be able to handle it. Also, I'd, I'd be surprised if the amount of gas in this room is enough to overpressure a couple of pipes. There's really not a lot in here, so I reckon it'd be likely that I could just push this into the pipe and not worry about it at all. And it'd be just fine. Hey, thanks, Rodenwald. Thank you so much for seven months. Okay, I lack the pipe to put the last vent in. That's fine. Uh, or do I? I do not like it. I can put it here. Uh, I'm suspicious this is not going to evacuate very quickly, so I should have time to come inside and see how long the process is taking. Could be wrong, though. It'd be kind of cool if I'm wrong and it evacuates that quickly. That'd be nice. Okay. Jetpack on. And you're on. And you're up as high as you go. And turn you on. Close the door. Open the door.
Uh, it is going down, but it is going to take a while. I do have a labeler with me, Ostoga, but I don't know. I couldn't remember what the max was, so I figured I'd just tap on it until I got there because I, <laughs> I didn't know what label I could actually write in there. Does the labeler tell you? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It's done now. Oh, I did not know that. I did not know you could just type in 999999. I think this is going to take a while. So I will leave that. And go do some other things. Let's close the door. Um, that one's my inward one. So let's set this to... That's set to outward. Let's turn it on. Use it to help a little bit. Jetpack on. That way we've got the volume pump sucking the air out through all those vents and this active vent sucking out from the from this passive vent. And we'll see. There's the pipe vacuum. Let's check that I'm that's yeah. I'm curious too. Nope. The pipe, it's so the passive vents are able to put enough gas in there to overcome the amount that the pump is pulling out. But it pushes too much air for this passive vent to cope with. So I've clearly got enough passive vents that I'm actually perfectly equalizing, I think. Uh, yeah, I could, I could replace that with an active vent and see the difference. But the difference will depend on what's coming in for the volume pump because it's moving a volume of low pressure. So if the pressure was higher on here, it would be able to move more than the active vent. And that's why I think there might be a tipping point where the two are different. Doesn't seem like that's moving any... Oh, uh, maybe a little bit quicker? With more power? I, I don't need to worry about this pipe getting overpressured. It's not going to because it's... Um, now that there's less pressure on... Less gas on this side, there's less to push through. Because the volume pump is pushing through... What is it? A thousand liters at 746 pascals, which is very minimal moles of gas. Um, King of Ga King of Death. Maybe there'll be some more city skylines. Um, I'm not sure. It felt it felt like it felt fun, but I'm not sure it's. I'm not sure it's got enough to do multiplayer with the three of us. I don't know. I don't know. I felt I felt not like, yeah, I want to get back to more when we finished up. I wasn't I'm still not sure how I felt about it after the end of the stream. If that's done. I'm just waiting for that bit.
Um, no, Exca, we're not comparing active vents and passive vents. We're comparing active vents and turbo pumps. Um, the, 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 the different comparisons. I can't remember what I was doing. I've already got a system ready to pressurize it. Oh, that's what I should do. How is the temperature in this looking? 89 degrees. What about this? Minus 8 degrees. Okay. That's all right. Hydration critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Exca, the passive vent doesn't limit me. No, I completely disagree with that statement. With the setup I have, the passive vent on the outside does not limit, and with the number of passive vents I've got on the inside, the passive vent doesn't limit. The pressure in this pipe is equalized to the pressure in the atmosphere around it, or pretty dang close to, which means I've got enough passive vents pulling in the gas around there to make them equal, therefore I'm not moving more gas than the passive vents can pull in. This pipe can be whatever pressure I like it to be. It doesn't matter. The pump will still be able to push into it. So this passive vent is not limiting me because it doesn't matter. So the passive vents are not a limiting factor here with the way it's set up. Uh, no, Tinjo, I am not a programming expert by any sense, any stretch. I actually haven't done any today. I got distracted by building stuff because I wanted to build things. Uh, just trying to decide what my next job is. Because I've got to wait for that area to depressurize and it's going to take a while. I can't really do... I don't really want to do anything interior-wise until it's pressurized. Because I think working on the inside of that will be a lot nicer to do once the two are a combined volume of gas. Um, so yeah, I think maybe tearing down the old greenhouse is the way to go. Can't, yeah, can't think of anything else that needs doing. This is going to be a bit annoying to have to move all these bits as well. Secure the oxygen from a storm. I actually don't need to worry about the oxygen at all. I have my own oxygen supply with ability to fill my bottles from it. So I don't I, I kind of don't care about that tank, but maybe I should build a thing to temporarily connect it so I can evacuate it of its oxygen so it's not wasted. Uh, where 
is my oxygen system? Over here. I've built a tank connector and then build a volume pump. I can pump it into the rest of the oxygen system. Yeah, I guess I could bring it into the... I could bring it inside. I don't think I can through the doors I've got, though. I may end up killing myself. Oof. That makes me nervous doing that. This game is about survival in space, King of Death. That's what it's about. And chemical and... Uh, yeah, chemical engineering. Always walk backwards with these things. Uh... Uh... Hard space shipbreaker. Um, yes, I have looked at what type of game it is. No, I'm not interested. Um, Hard space shipbreaker doesn't have, from everything I've seen of it, anything to make me want to play it on PC. But I feel like it could that style of gameplay be an interesting mobile game to play when you're like traveling somewhere uh, all right <laughs> let's make a recycling center Well, Tinja, I think you can see why I'm saying mobile game because it's it's not about like there's no there's no longer game loop. Um, you cut things down, you put things in a hole. It's a problem solving game in terms of like Trying to think of the word, the right words for it. Hey, it's it is actually working. This is coming down. Plants are eating the CO2. It's kind of like once you've figured out how to cut down each wreck, what new is there to do? That's where I kind of... The, that style of game, my brain jumps to that end way too quickly for me to find it engaging for a long period. Um, I, I get... I kind of get bored of that way of Come doing on. things. And I, I see myself getting to that point much quicker with games like that than I do in... The games that I enjoy, and sometimes there doesn't seem to be a clear logical connection between why. Um, but it's just how it is. Station is is a bit of a puzzle game, but the puzzles are bigger. Um, the puzzles have more layers to them than what I've seen of. Um, Hard space. And... Yeah. What am I doing? I was making... I think they're at this one. Aren't they? Centrifuge. Yeah, Eisen, that's what I was figuring. And because it is just a puzzle game... It just 
I don't... I've never really played that many puzzle games. Thanks, Gruz. Um, what? Why did the base resist all efforts to get it to work? Because of the station ears. I'm so lost. I'm so lost where you're going with that, Gruz. <laughs> so lost. Uh Iron and copper. Ah, uh, yeah, I did play the co-op escape room with Capac. So yeah, that is a puzzle game I played. I don't expect to play that specific puzzle game ever again. Um, like, I think I could probably get a couple of hours of fun out of Hard Space Shipbreaker. But I'd get those couple of hours and I would never play it again. until they add more content, and then I'd play it again until I ran out of that content, and then I'd never play it again until there was more. Um, I find I tend to remember the solutions to stuff fairly well, much more so than other things. And yeah, I've played Portal 2 co-op, but once, uh, once again, once I've learnt the solutions... It's not as fun. Like, the reason I was able to go back to Portal is that it has so many problems and I forgot the solutions to a bunch of them. And because it had been, like, four years since I'd last play it, played it. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think you just need to go into those games knowing that once I've solved the problems, there's not much to do. Is the solving of the problems fun? Yeah. Maybe it is. But... When I'm looking at games to play on stream, I try and find stuff that I know I can play for a while. Uh, I think that's all I need. I think I will build this outside. Yeah, async exception. I think, like, playing Shipbreakers on the Steam Deck would be great. a great use of it. Because I don't want... Like, when I used to travel on public transport to get to uni and things like that, I didn't want a game that required ongoing inputs. Uh, that's the wrong time. I didn't want a game that required me to remember what I'd done last time. Because I might, it might be a few weeks between each play session. What I wanted was something that I could pick up, play, put down. And that was it. And so I think problem, like these sorts of problem solving games are perfect for it. Uh, puzzle games. Um, I, I always felt that they were perfect from the way I liked to play games when traveling. Should I make my recycling area in a spot of shame? <laughs> Off to the side. I think where I'd like it. Eisen, have you ever seen Wasted Playgrounded? I don't know if he's played it or not. I don't know what he's... I have never... I don't actually recall ever talking to him about it. I suspect Grounded may suffer from lag issues, though. 
Like if there's a big delay between your actions and when things happen, I think it might be an issue for Grounded. Could put them here. In the entryway. Ah, uh, Camille, I I played some of Mist a long, long time ago. Didn't understand what the game was about. Um, because I was very young at the time. Um, I might have a different experience of it now, but I, I still don't... I'm not convinced that that's my sort of game. I don't know where I want to put this. I need more steel frames. So I think what I want to do is be able to walk through here. We've got all our ores on this side, and then go over to... Maybe over the back here. Walk down... And then I'll put, put them over here. Am I going to play more Core Keeper? I wasn't able to get... Capac wasn't as sold on Core Keeper as I thought he was going to be. Um, I thought he'd be keen to go back to it, but he hasn't even mentioned it, so... I don't know. I quite enjoyed it. Um... I think it might be something he'd be willing to go back to once he saw that there was more boss content for him to fight against and do that sort of stuff with. Um, I wanted some steel frames. No frames in my lockers. Got iron frames, but no steel ones. And everything's steel now. Steel, steel, steel. Yeah, Gruz, I did see that Raft is getting its final big update. Um, I reckon Capac will want to play that. And I would kind of like to play it through knowing there's an end to the story and a where a place to take the story. Added a fourth boss to Core Keeper and it was tough. Huh. Maybe. Maybe that'll be enough. Uh, that's plenty of frames. Uh, King of Death, I've played a bit of the forest. I've played a fair bit of it, actually. Um, never on stream, though. I didn't like some of the way they did stuff with it. I don't I've never been a big fan of that style of building that's really common in uh, Unreal Engine games. Don't even know if it's Unreal Engine, but it's just the style that I always think of as that. I think I also watched, um, I watched someone playing it, and so ruined the story for myself. <laughs> so there wasn't much reason for me to do stuff, because I already knew what the outcome was. Um, and because it was so focused on the story, I didn't want to go back. And I think Capac's argument around it was the same thing. He'd watched it. He'd watched someone else play it, and then was like... I don't really have the motivation for this.
Alrighty. Recycler. Oh, that's sticking out. I don't like that sticking out. Recycler and then centrifuge. Branch and two steel sheets. Welding torch. Okay. So I think once I've powered these up, I should be able to test them. My understanding is I'll shove stuff in this side. It'll create stuff that I want to go into the centrifuge so I can just have it directly connected. And then it'll pop out stuff that I can actually use again. That bird's loud. Yeah, Gruz. It's very true. Story-based games... are a hard thing to... enjoy once you've seen someone else play it. For me, anyway. Um... And so in some ways, I'm kind of hesitant to play those things on stream because I know there are a lot of people like me who probably don't want to watch it um, because they will want to experience it for themselves. And so it's like, should I avoid playing a thing because I other people are going to want to play it themselves? And so view counts would be lower, that sort of thing. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to want a stacker there, because otherwise these things are going to get blown away. I didn't realize this was so quick. Thought there'd actually be some spinny time before it threw everything out. Seems to be very, very, very fast. Thanks so much, Amaru. Two years! Two full years. It's crazy. I usually just have railings as a pen and have chutes deposit in the middle. Oh, I quite like that idea. Especially for the oars. Um, Alright. Let's process some of these uh, filters.
Does anyone know why this isn't a... Oh. Never mind. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> I was just impatient. Crunch up the little batteries too. Yeah, I suppose so. There's no point keeping them. Um... Uh, that pollutant one is still potentially relevant. Crunch up the basic solar panels, the old furnace, the iron sheets. The old mining drill. Let's do it all! Do I have any shoots down here? I do. Uh, throw some of this in and then I'll grab the shoots and actually connect these two. Keep walking around the back of this stupid blockers. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do trade as well. But that's possibly a little ways off. But my plan is to put a trading platform out there. Uh, get rid of the mining drill. Get rid of the battery. Get rid of the solar panels. Get rid of the furnace. Gold. Turn off your centrifuge and it will stack up internally. Will it? Oh yeah, all the reagent will stack up, won't it? Nitrogen filters that are intact. There's nothing here I want to scrap, I think. I'll keep the liquid canister storage. I don't think I'm going to need it, but I'll keep it for now. I'll put this glass away. Keep a stack of iron sheets, but I don't want too many of them. I got distracted, Grazub. <laughs> Got distracted. I did not do the IC10 stuff that I was supposed to do. I guess I don't need the ground penetrating radar since I've got the goggles. Or the tracking beacon because I've got the GPS thing. Best to keep reagents coming out of the centrifuge separated, but they will come out separate if they are different. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see if this feels any different to what I did before. Okay, seems like you do want to have it on. Well, I already mixed them with each other, so... Now different alloys. Hmm. All right, let's let's chuck this in. See what I get. Aha. Uh -huh. Oops. I don't know what just went through, but I should have probably closed that lever. Oopsie. Well, that's most of that stuff cleared out of those lockers. I need to do something with these canisters. I want to set up a little system where I can equalize them with the... Oh, I can empty them into the waste setup. So I might get a couple more steel frames, put them down here, and have a little thing I can shove them in that has a volume pump to suck all the gas out of them. So I can either recycle them or use them for something else. Um... Tablet should probably go inside into the medical room. Don't think I care about flags. Nor do I care about a spare wrench. I uh, might keep these water bottles though. That's those lockers emptied. Oh, welcome back, doggo. You done destroying whatever you were destroying out there? Nope. Off she goes again. Uh... Yeah, the reason I put them through the recycler is I don't have any access to put stuff directly into the centrifuge. And I was like, I wonder if this will work. And that's why I put it through the recycler again. I think I lost some reagent from that process, but... Eh. Whatever. I'm not fussed. I don't... I'm not struggling for resources so much that that matters Ooh, I wonder if my space is now vacuum it's been a while Let's go check it. Jetpack on. Ooh. No, 
we're still at tiny pressure. So it's still going to be a while. I know, Joyce, but if I go straight to a really hard planet, um, Capac will hate me. <laughs> and probably lose interest and not play, and I don't want to do that to him. So I want to uh, want to make it so that there's a, it's fun for me on an easier one, but it's also fun for him. Jetpack on. Yeah, that last little bit of gas is so hard to get out of these rooms. Oh well. Patience is a virtue. Got more destruction to do. Kind of feels weird demoing this with how long it's been sitting here. Be done. Yes, there are there are many things I need to balance with um, frustrating or not or otherwise um, capac. Um, yeah, I know the last bit of X is probably f easier to filter out, but it's kind of nice not needing to. Kind of like, um... Not needing a filtration system, although that actually makes me think of that I probably do want to have a filtration system ultimately. So I may want to do that. Because if I have a filtration system, then I can just have that running anyway, because just as a safety thing, I probably want it. Hmm. I've, I guess that can go in the utilities room when I build it. Probably put some sort of filtration setup in there. A bunch of different filters, just 
So I guess all I really need to do is take out volatiles and take out pollutant. Every, the other, most of the other gases are probably okay for the moment and unlikely to get introduced to the system. Oh, that is true, Demon Works. I could set up logic so that it only turns on the filters when required. That's something I could program. That could be an okay little task to do. Wow, this cable cabling over here had gotten weird. That was a lot of it. There was a lot of inefficient cabling that I did early on. Yeah, I suppose what I could do is have a gas sensor detecting whatever the CO, like whatever the um, pollutant, like if there's any pollutant, and if there's pollutant, turn on the filter. As a fairly simple thing to start off with and then add in other ones that can turn on potentially using the same chip have other functions uh, that can turn on stuff like other filtration systems and whatnot <laughs> uh Lamixus, yep i definitely got distracted from my intended plans for this stream i did indeed At least I've, I figured there was a high enough chance of it happening. That's why I didn't name the stream just straight up IC10. Because I was like, I think I'm probably going to find other projects I need to do. And come back to the IC10 stuff later. Although, I have to say, after last week's stream, I was in such a happy place having managed to get that to work. And felt so excited about the prospect of learning the stuff for uh, making Lego robots. Um, like, proper excited. Yeah, the Arc Furnace I'll move as a backup thing. Now let's get rid of all these other bits. Now, are there any gases in this line that I care about? Or is it all evacuated at this point? 160 kilopascals of CO2. Yeah, let's let's empty it out. In fact, there'll be nothing on this side, so that's fine. What I might do is try and connect all of these pipes up and over like all of these various bits that are actually holding something connect them up over to the waste tank over here and then demo them and shift the gas in there so it seems wasteful to throw it out this however is just all x so don't care
Um, Demon Works, that's not that surprising, um, saying that IC10s were basically invented by a user, because programmable blocks in Space Engineers exist in the state they do largely because of malware. As in, not malware the concept, malware the person. Uh, he's responsible for... Oh, wait, that's not actually removed yet. Oh, no, I just lost all those bits. I just lost all those radiators because that storm hit. Whoops. Well, not all of them. <laughs> A bunch of them. Oh no, <laughs> they all got stopped by this wall. <laughs> Perfect. Only slightly damaged. They're near new in the way that a, um, a GPU used for crypto mining is near new. That is pretty awesome, though, Demonworks, that someone went to the effort of creating a full design document and everything. Uh, I can't... I don't really want to risk tearing stuff up and dropping things during a storm. So... I might go inside. some of this cable with me. Uh, no point taking the table and microwave because I'm on the wrong side of the internal doors. Although I suppose I could just bring them inside and... Actually, I take that back. There is a point to bringing the things. I just didn't think it through. Because if I brought the table and microwave in here, it'd already be in here, and then I wouldn't need to bring it through an airlock later. Because I will eventually need to bring it through an airlock. Poop. tomatoes are already rotten. Not that it matters. Thirty seven degrees in here. Really? Seven in that pipe. Why is it so hot in that pipe? Recatech made the concept. That's why the chip has his name on it. Oh, that's cool. It's convenient that the person who came up with the concept's name actually works as a chip manufacturer name. There are plenty of other things to eat. I've just not made them. Can 
because I didn't make them. I don't have a good reason. I just haven't made them yet. I suppose it's largely because it's just not been on my priority list when I haven't got the space to set everything up properly yet. Because I don't have my kitchen yet. No, TFE, your name would not work particularly well for that, although they could they could shorten it. Oh the spaghetti. The floating spaghetti. I, I think that might be worth looking at um, before I come back, like before Dre bringing Capac in and doing some multiplayer stuff. I think it could be interesting to look at um, some of the food related mods to see if I think they'll be useful for like playing with Capac and playing this multiplayer again. Those were in that. Jetpack on. Yeah, the initial food does last you quite some time. It doesn't last you quite so long when there are two people eating it, though. Um, so there are certainly differences to the way the balance plays out when there are two of you. Because it's balanced for solo, not for co-op, from what I've seen. Looks like I've got most of the pieces I'll need to set up the filtration unit because I've got two atmospherics kits. I've got so much junk to sort through here. <laughs> I should probably have approached this differently, but I think it's too late now. Ah, uh, yes, you can alter the drop items. Somehow. I've never fiddled with that, but I'm fairly confident you can mess with it. Uh, where shall I put this? I guess it can just sit there. Doesn't need to be anywhere else. Yeah, I'll stick it. When I get round to it, I think it might be worth us having a chat over what might work. There's a setup. Okay, dokey. Uh, I need an insulated bit of pipe just to branch that off. Or I can just pop up the insulated bit, actually. you off. Uh, 
Um, yeah, let's go high. Then I will attempt to connect up all the pipes to each other. And then tear them down from one end backwards. So, okay, let's let's talk about this a little bit now. I haven't had to eat anything. Like, I've still got 51% of my first can of tomato soup. So, if Kapak and I were to drop together, what do you guys think we'd need to cut down the amount of food to to make it challenging without making it near impossible? Yeah, it is nice that the pipes auto-close when you expose an end of one of them. Uh, that would be very difficult to manage otherwise. Ah, uh, probably not difficult, more just tedious. Isn't playing with campaign challenge enough? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm not sure where that balance might sit with um Do you, do we just drop us down to having just two cans of food? Would that do enough? Or would it do too much? Yeah. I'm honestly not sure how this how that this would play out. Cuz I wasn't thinking about it at the start when I did this. I'm unsure. Two food bars each and one can of soup. The food bars don't give you as much as a can of soup, do they? Yeah, I feel like I've got heaps of water bottles too. But is it just because I've... Like, I beelined a lot of things to try and do it as quickly as possible. That it's ended up feeling like it was easy, or is it... Is it something that is actually easy? Like, am I trying to balance the difficult... Who am I balancing the difficulty for first? And how much can I get away with balancing it for me? Because <laughs> it would be... I think it would add something nice to have... To feel like I have to... Try hard to keep us both alive. In some ways. Let's get the wrong bit first. Well, certainly got a bunch of oops. Chuck that in there. 
Certainly got a lot of pipe out of this. I don't know what my hunger setting is at the moment. It's whatever it defaulted to. I didn't actually change it. There we go. No wasted gas. Oh, my logic set up for the lights. I was quite proud of that. These lockers are getting very, very full. take the lockers inside. I want to take the tables inside. I don't need to bring the pipe inside. Don't need the CO2 filters either. came down a bit quicker than I was thinking it was going to. I thought that was going to take a lot longer. <laughs> you need a way to sort stuff in lockers. Yes. I'm just... I've been dumping stuff in there now because I wanted to clear the space and then I'll fiddle with what I need to do to get it to work after that uh, like I'll, these are not the final locations for these things this is just putting it there so I've got somewhere to have it for the moment uh, I should probably put these extra lockers down because I'm going to need that extra space Making it so I get less back from certain foods. Like making it so you get less food benefit out of just eating a tomato. That could add something. Because that'll push us to move to getting real food. Which Capac would probably do anyway. Um, as that's kind of his style of play. He'll be like, I, no, I just I want this better thing. I just want it. I saw this thing in a menu that said I could build it, so that's why I built it. Uh, right. French in time. I guess the challenge is, like, I'd probably need to set it up in a way that I can mess with the balance as we go. Like, if I've made it too hard or too easy or whatever, um, fiddle with it. Because I reckon there'll be... I almost feel like some of these survival games would benefit from dynamic amounts of gain from certain resources so like what I'm thinking is over time those early foods that worked perfectly well with the consumption rates initially um, stop working kind of how 
in RimWorld, as your pawns have been on your colony for longer, they start having more needs and less bonuses. I wonder if there'd be a way to incorporate a system like that into a survival game to kind of create that same sort of building challenge as in a challenge that grows over time and makes slowly drives you towards building the better stuff because it's potentially easier to balance it that way because you've got another lever to pull to mess with rates of stuff than leaving yourself with only the ability to change how much how much your food bar gets filled from a specific food That's feels weird having that not having nothing here now. Yeah, Demon Works. I think Oxygen Not Included does a lot of things the same way as Rimworld. Uh, both being colony sims, it makes sense Get that they would on. have a lot of similar uh, sort of functional challenges. Ooh, we're down to point 0.3 pascals. It's so low that the thing's blinking instead of staying on. We're almost vacuum. Oh yeah, I've definitely killed my solar tracking. That's fine. I'm going to get rid of those solar panels soon. Um, I'm just trying to decide how best to do what I need to do next. Because these lockers are all on iron frames and I want to replace them with steel, but I can't remember if they fall over if I remove what they're supported on because they are supposed to be a supported block. I don't know if that just applies for when you build them. Uh, let's let's take these things inside. Tables. Locker. No, don't need the stairs. Anything else for inside? I don't think so. Oh, maybe the suit. Yeah, that was exactly what I was thinking, Takari. Like, having something that is a lever to step up the survival game difficulty so that people don't desire... So that people don't stick with the obvious first food or the obvious first whatever. Uh, seven days to die, I could benefit from it. Every, every survival game, I think, could benefit from having a system like that that the designers can tweak over time. Like, Seven Days to Die tries to step up the difficulty with the zombies that you face by having a game stage where you get harder zombies the higher your game stage is. What I'm thinking is, I wonder if you could come up with a system that feels believable to the player as a reason why there's similarly a growth in difficulty around your food consumption and other things like that. I don't need filtration. I can actually open my helmet right now. I'll show you. Unlock helmet. Open. It's fine. See? Helmet's open. Not dying. Yeah, Demon Works. I Valheim's system is often brought up as an example of a really good food system in a game. And 
under a lot of circumstances, I agree. Unless your game is about survival. Like, pure survival, like Station Ears kind of is. I think being able to not die in Station Ears because you ran out of food, because you, all it does is just move a few stats bars to the lowest point, I think in Station Ears would break the game. Station Ears needs that if you don't eat, you die. Because it's about that element of survival, because there's no hostile to make the hostiles about the survival. I think it works in Valheim because in Valheim it's about the things you're fighting being your greatest risk to survival than you being able to farm or whatever. Um, in... I think it'd work for space engineers because, again, your engineer isn't worth very much in space engineers, so... If you were going to implement a food system, having it as a buff system rather than as a penalty system would be better. Yes, I will get rid of my floor vents. Good point. What could you buff through Space Engineers? Um, in Space Engineers, what I think you could buff would be power consumption. You could buff oxygen consumption rates. You could buff health. You could buff the amount of recoil you deal with when firing the rifles. Um, those sorts of things could be buffed. You could buff tool power consumption as well. And what I think would be nice in Space Engineers is if those things were passively buffed over time the longer your engineer stays alive. So your death penalty as such is going back to default. The longer you stay alive, the better those things get. Yeah, running speed could also be a thing. Um, there are plenty of options that I think fit within the Space Engineers universe um, that could be done yeah carry capacity is always a, no, a thing that gets messed with yeah demon works i think in a game like station ears having mixtures of food types required to remain healthy a la green hell long dark all those sorts of games uh, would work. I think that food in general is not a great... Food in general is a difficult thing for me to find a way to justify its existence in a game like Space Engineers, though. So I think in Space Engineers it would need to be a different system. Because we've got enough bars to watch in Space Engineers as it is, I think. And it's not really a survival game as such, it's more of a construction game, I guess. At least, I'm talking about defaults here, I'm not talking about what I would like. I would probably play with the other things. Uh, but I feel like the vanilla default option in Space Engineers should not be that. No, it's Angry Grinder. But yeah, I think you, I think a lot of these systems are interesting to look at for where you might find different ideas to take from. It's nice to see that there are new ideas coming out, like what we saw with Valheim. So I can't think of another game that did it that way that penalized you so little for not eating, but still made food relevant. And it works with their game systems really nicely.
I think the more I the more I try and think about these things from a mechanical point of view, as in a game mechanics point of view, the more I wonder. how much the um, like the more I think that you really have to have designed a game with having food and water and other things required from the ground up because what you're trying to do is push the player to do a thing I would think you're trying to make them make Food related stuff. You're trying to make them build things that allow them to support themselves. And Space Engineers has very little in it that's about supporting the engineer. Because supporting the engineer is really easy. Um, could argue all day about whether that's a good easy or a bad easy. My feeling is it's a good easy. Um, which. Just probably not what people expected me to say on that. Because it's not what I play. Oops, crowbar. But I think default for space engineers being easy is good. Uh, do I have a gas fuel generator set up? Nope. I am pure renewables. Unless you're talking about the stuff for the furnace, in which case, yes, that's all set up and perfectly fine. Well, Max Jack, I play Space Engineers Survival, but... Just because I play that way, I think... I don't think everyone should. Because I like building with some sort of survival goal in mind. That's how I like to play. I find it fun have giving myself those targets. Um, and I think... The fact that Space Engineers is more successful as a game in terms of how many people are playing it than, say, Empyreon shows that perhaps there are more people who like that or perhaps it's more unique to have it not be a survival game. Because Empyreon's competing with a lot of other survival games out there. Whereas Space Engineers doesn't really have a lot of engineering games out there to compete with it. Because you've got things like Stormworks and the like, which don't have a lot of the same immediacy to what to the stuff that you build from playing them so far. Still want to play more Stormworks, but it doesn't have that same immediacy to it that you get from Space Engineers. As in, I put this thing down, I'm immediately in the world with it, playing with it. I was hoping that... Um, ugh, I still hate this name. Starship Evo was going to be a bit of a competitor to it. Um... Not convinced it will be anymore. Well, I kind of want to see where it goes. Oh, getting back a lot of wasted cable. Shouldn't need to make some for a little while. <laughs> it 
Yeah. I'm sure I will use it eventually, Ostega. Um, that's why I didn't say it's, an, it's enough. <laughs> it's not for a little while. Uh, Starship Evo isn't really a game yet. From what I've been keeping an eye on, it's a creative sandbox. Um, I'm waiting for it to become a game and then I'm going to play it. But I actually backed Starship Evo before it was ever on Steam or anything. Um, so I've, I've had access to it for ages, but I, I've just kind of kept an eye on it. Because I wanted to support the guy, because I think the concepts are good. Um, it's just waiting for the execution to be um, a game from the way that I play games. Oh, some of this is steel. Starship Evo does have that, um, I want a better term, but I can't think of it, Minecraft aesthetic, but I, I think, um, I think the gameplay still has some future interest for me. It's just got to get there. It's not there yet. For me. For me. I know I know some people who've played it and really enjoyed it so far. Um, and that gives me hope. More hope for the future for it. But it really needs to get gameplay before I'd consider playing it. Like, I didn't even play Space Engineers until it had survival mode. I knew of it. I kept a bit of an eye on it when it was creative mode only. But it wasn't a game I wanted to play until it had survival. Because I just... I just find it really hard to play a creative only game for more than a little bit because I struggle um, I struggle to come up with challenges for myself and so having a survival mode gives me just that little bit of a this is what you want first way to start out and that really helps me out in terms of finding fun in a game. got here solar panels let's smelt them down it is interesting to talk about all this stuff though i think i find it interesting to talk about <laughs> whoa Well, drat. I don't know what region is, and I need to get some more. Where might the bit go? Need to get some more heat into the furnace. should I smelt down? That'll probably do for now. I'm guessing this is not hot enough anymore. Let's dump out the pressure. Dump out the gases and I'll make I'll make it nice and hot and see if we can get the other stuff. My worry is I need to get the temperature right for whatever is in this reagent mix. And I don't know what it is. 
Like, what if it's solder and it's now going to be too hot for it? Look up what the solar panels need. I think it's just steel, because I remember them needing some steel. I don't think there was any solder in them. Alright, that'll probably be enough. Oh, yep. Steel. There we go. Grab the next one, which is probably going to be steel again. And they were all steel. Uh, <coughs> uh, Eisenwolf, it's often oddly easier in stationers to go hot then cold rather than gradually cranking up the heat because of the way you have to smelt the gases. Uh, sorry, ignite the gases. Well, this feels very different. I am looking forward to removing those lockers too. I'll need to replace that battery soon. Hydration critical. Oh, okay, that's good to know, Ostoga. You don't need to set the pressures or temperatures correctly, you just need it hot enough to smelt something. So the reagent processing temperature is probably set at something specific. And as long as you achieve that, you can process any reagent. <coughs> that makes a lot of sense because it'd be really annoying otherwise. Um, shoot system to throw things inside, I think. That's where we're at. Put an outlet on the other end, and we're good. Make a new one. Where's my shoots? Where's my shoots? There we go. And outlet. Where's the outlet? There we go. <laughs> A nice passive system to throw things inside that's very, very temporary and intended as such. Because um, my plan would be to throw everything inside except for, I guess, the ores. 
um, and store it all in here. Try and remember to take the built stuff outside with me because I think otherwise I'll end up with two storage areas for constructed components. And that would be suboptimal. But now that I say that, I feel like I'm going to need a storage area to put all the stuff that I've built. Drat. Hmm. What to do about that? Don't know where I'd put that storage. <laughs> Time for a vending machine. Uh, I don't think I'm ready for vending machines. They sound complex. I'm not sure I want to deal with <laughs> complexity at this stage. Oh, oh, I think we're at vacuum. Yes. That'll be good. And we're at vacuum in here, so we can turn you off and open the door. Vacuum, 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 vacuum. Vacuum, 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 vacuum. Still vacuum. Yes. All right. Ready to pressurize then. Uh, I need to go back outside annoyingly because I did that in a dumb way that everyone told me was dumb at the time, but I still did anyway. And turn off the pipe. The pump thing. Turbo pump. Turbo pump off. Now I can remove all those interior pipes. And we can set this up. Oops, that's not the internal vent, that, that's the external vent. set up this thing. So we've got a gas sensor. Got our external door. Internal door. External vent. Internal vent. External pressure. I'm just going to set it zero because it does make the other one quicker. Internal pressure. Let's put it at 40. And I just need to grab myself a passive vent. We can start pressurizing in that space. Though, what I'd like to do first is just make sure that the CO2 temperature is not too high. 13 degrees, perfect. 
passive event. There we go. Jetpack on. Uh, the CO2 lines aren't disconnected, Takari. I've just got them set up so that I can switch to a... Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just realised I might not have a wall to actually connect them to. I should grab a wall piece before I go in. Okay, cycle to interior. And cancel. Temperature still says nil, so we should still be in vacuum. So what I've set up here is this was the pump that pushed the CO2 into the base in the first place. So I can put a passive vent on here. Then, we should just have a tiny amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Or O2, N2, and CO2. Sure, fine. Because it would have been the... It'll be a, the makeup of the stuff that's on the other side of the wall. But now... If I turn this on... We will start getting a lot of pressure in here. With a lot of CO2. Uh, I've got... I actually took the radiators off my big tanks, Demon Wax. Because I needed to take them off because I was smelting stuff that required the gases, the exhaust gases to remain hotter for longer. Okay, let's do that again for a little bit. Still got a ways to go. I just don't want to overpressure the room <laughs> intentionally. It's really hard to tell what, what the pressure is going to be like on the other side after leaving this on for a bit. I guess I could walk away from it and watch the pressure come up. When it reaches something and it's a middling pressure, I'll come back. Uh, I wasn't planning on leaving this thing on, Demon Works. I was. This was just to get my initial gases, so I'm not fussed about it being automated with a an overpressure valve sort of thing. Like, I, I think the frequency with which I'm going to use this system would mean that the time taken to set up an automation, like, to set up automation will be longer than the time that I'm actually going to spend using the thing. That is also true, Ostoga. Then the pipe would blow. Because the pump would keep pumping into the pipe. Faster, 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 faster. Wait, pressure's going down? Am I out of 
gas. Have I put all the CO2 in there? I think I might have. Well, that's, um... Less than optimal. I suppose it is a very large space again. Uh, let's go see. Let's go see how much CO2 I've got left. I might have to start bringing some other gases in here. Rip these up while I'm here. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm out of CO2, which means I can either go grab some oxides or I can make some more CO2. But I just have to decide how I want to do that. Oh yeah, actually, that's a good point, Ostuga. I This pipe has stuff I want in it. So I should actually be popping it from the other end. Like making it come out here. But yes, I might have also act gotten to a point where I was going to make it blow. But that wouldn't have been the worst, because at least the gases would have stayed in here. I'm not sure I do have heaps of CO2 in the waste tank downstairs because I left the CO2 filters running for a while when I wasn't paying any attention to it. Uh, hopefully I do have some, but I'm not sure I have heaps. Oh, wait. No, because I haven't run it since I connected up those pipes, have I? From the old system. So there's a moderate amount. I don't think it's huge amount, because I don't think I had a lot, but there's a, there's a bit. You're right. And I have done a bit more smelting, but like, the amount of CO2 I have here is from all of the smelting. So that little bit of smelting I've done, I probably won't get a huge amount. I'll get some. I think I'm still going to have to think up another way of making sure this place has enough gas in it to be pressurized adequately. Because we're only at 20 kilopascals and I'd really like to get it up to 50 before I open the door between the two spaces. At least the temperature in there is lower than the other the temperature in the other part, so I'll be bringing the overall temp down, which will be nice. Let's go have a look. Ah, uh, no, you cannot check through the door. I do not have a system set up that allows me to do that. You can't just shove the tablet through the door or anything. That doesn't work. Oh, there's 1,200 kilomoles in there. Let's turn the CO2 on. And that's going to start. Emptying out pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, definitely ran the tank dry. That's surprising. Yeah, I... Alright, what I'm going to do... While those are running, let's go grab some Oxide. Is 
because that'll help me increase the pressure a bit further. My filters aren't fresh, but la last I checked, I think they're still working just fine. I might check them again after this, but they're, they're, they hadn't even used up one filter yet. Seems that filters expire in your suit much faster than they do in the atmospherics units. Yep, time for the dancing oxide rocks. <laughs> Might need to bring that air conditioner through somehow. Let it release its um, hot gas. Because once I dump all this oxide in, I may actually drop the temperature too low for the oxide to evaporate. We're only starting from 12 degrees. I do have the portable tank. I unfortunately pushed it through the other airlock. <laughs> and same with the aircon. I'd have to bring it around. Uh, let's push out the hot furnace gases because it might not be so bad for me to put some hot gas into that room. Yeah, Demon Works, I'm not sure how I feel about the portable um, aircon not being explosive either. I was kind of hoping for something dramatic last time, but was rather disappointed. I now have to make much more deliberate efforts to explode things. Uh, yes, the things, you can mount them to stuff to release their pressure and stuff for both tanks and the AC. Jetpack on. I really find the need though. Okay, let's go watch the dance of the Oxite Fairies. Ooh, should I do it in this tunnel? Or should I do it in the big open space? Probably the big open space. Okay, here we go. Oh, I think some came back up the stairs. Yeah, it really doesn't ever get old. Okay, uh... That's a good sign. They all sublimated. Hmm. 
And that's pushed us up to 40-ish kilopascals, maybe. It's kind of where I wanted to get. Let's turn this on. I think that's all of the CO2 added to this space now. There is no further CO2 available. And we have a 5% nitrogen... 47% CO2, 48% O2 at somewhere around 50 pascals, 50 kilopascals. Sweet. I think it's time to open this door. Da 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 da. Yeah, it is a nice temp, 10 degrees. Plenty of room to go upward as I add heat to the system. Let's open it up. This is going to get windy. Well, not too windy, actually. Yeah, having a nice and cool in here is going to help a lot. It's going to take a while for the temperature to equalize across that doorway. And I'm quite happy with the gas mix. And I'm ecstatic that I can walk between everywhere now. I can walk all the way through. And if I put floors down, I could walk without that little hitch every time I step over the doorway. Ooh, 38 degrees in here. That is toasty. Is the airlock the coldest spot? 16. The living area is the coldest spot at 11 degrees. At least the plants are going to be happy. And in theory, I can do this. My helmet is off. Fortunately, my helmet is also what has my lights. Cool. Oh, I'm so happy at that. Look at me with my helmet off. I really wish there were more tools available to me to mess with my camera position. So I always want to get cool screenshots with my thumbnail, but it just doesn't have the tools, or I don't know how to use them. Now I need to start thinking about lights throughout the rest of the base. So if I lock the helmet, I can still take it off, right? Yeah. Light on. So once I've got lights everywhere, I can just take my helmet off when I come inside. Might consider setting up an air loop to move atmosphere around using the greenhouse as your central location. Maybe. Um, I'm kind of inclined to just let it happen passively, though. Is there that? Is it really that bad to just have it equalize passively? It's slow, but do I need it to be quick? Do 
would only be if there's a... So I think the plants generate some degree of heat. I don't know about these... These things. Do these produce heat? Or is this room just hotter because it... Uh, never had any cooling set up in it. So it's had to passively equalize. So the machines do generate heat. Okay, as well. What's the water temperature in there? 31. 28. Why is the temperature so... How is that water staying so hot? Have I got radiators on the outside? Or did I take them off? Ah. <laughs> this old chestnut. Having two airlocks means that the airlocks aren't always set up the way you want them to be. I suppose what I could do instead of... I don't necessarily need the gas mixing to be active, do I? I could have passive vents with pipe networks that connect disparate locations so it moves through the pipe network instead, which, given the way the game works, should give me a shorter transit time for the equalization. Because the pipe network is treated as a singular thing. Yeah, I do. These liquid radiators really aren't doing a lot to keep the temperature down. Even though outside is quite cold. Or is it what people were saying in the radiator? The radiators, the radiators definitely work on insulated pipe, but maybe I should replace the insulated pipe with non-insulated. Probably should. I'm not sure why I did this with insulated pipe in the first place. Oops, did that wrong. Dang it. Because I actually want this pipe network out here to get cold and be cold so that I've got a way to equal to drop the temperature inside. Uh, yeah, I guess I could use a heat exchanger. I've always already got this system Jet set up. Uh, Jetzilla, I finished recording the next episode of Survival Impossible yesterday. Uh, my plan is to do some editing of that this afternoon, Jet as well as watching through Moosey's edits of Scavenger Hunt this afternoon. Because he's done... Another four episodes ahead of where we are. So I need to watch them through and give him any notes I have on them. Non-insulated pipe will react with the frame also. Um, that, as you say, that might be okay though. Uh, Demonworks, yes, this feeds directly to the plants, but there is a valve here. So I can flick this valve to control the, pre the temperature. 
movement between the two halves. Um, but it's also... Yeah, the temperature in this water network outside would need to get a lot lower than it currently is for it to start being an issue. And it's real slow to move. As to be expected, given it's water. Yeah, and the water temp is also getting high. Higher than I want. I don't know what the safe range is for plants, though. Yeah, so are the frames taking on... Which of these frames would take on which atmospheric pressure? Oh, uh, sorry, temperature. Are they taking on the general planet's atmosphere temperature or the planet, the little bit of atmosphere on the inside global atmo so yeah that's fine because global atmo global atmo temperature is 12 degrees this is still not still not really shifting am i going to need to build a bigger network to drop the temperature of this more rapidly 5 and 60 degrees for safe water temperature for plants ah oh, so i've got heaps of room This is a really slow bleed off of temperature. No, oh, should expect that for water. Should expect that. All right. Um, no, I don't need flow through the pipes. So, Jetpack on. there's just water sitting in these pipes, and the water will eventually equalize temperature with the ambient temperature, because there are radiators and because the pipe is not insulated. So, slowly that temperature will drop inside the pipes. Uh, it should drop more rapidly overnight, because the temperature differential is greater than what it currently is at the moment, where there's only 10 degrees difference. Uh, there's no flow through pipes as such, either. Or is there? So this, this valve, does it instantly equalize the temperature between the two halves when I open it? Or is there a... Because I've created a same network. Or is there a... Time it takes for that to happen. if it's not instantly then does the game continue to consider them as separate networks because that would put my plants at risk if the temperatures out here ever get cold enough but they shouldn't get that far below freezing that it would be a problem actually Because if they did, if there was a risk of that, then what I'd do is build an internal extra segment. So I have some buffer to the with like an ex, an extra segment with heaters on it, so I can kind of fiddle with it a bit. Or I guess I could put in a pump to pump water between the two halves the two networks, so that it, it's a more gradual process. Uh, 
That's so nice. I'm gonna. Look at this pleasant temperature inside. I'm very happy about this. Need to decide where I'm gonna put my door to punch through onto that deck, though. Um. I could have multiple doors, actually. There we go. Balcony that I can access without a jetpack. I'm really happy about this. Uh, yes, an internal temperature of 27 is probably a bit too warm, but it's it's coming down. It's still falling. It's, it's better than it was. It was at 30 something before. Just definitely too hot inside. I know I didn't get onto any of the. Um, IC10 programming that I thought I would today, but maybe, maybe next week. Oh, actually, no, not next week. Next week, I might, in this time slot, be finishing off the Assertive Combat Systems mod. Because my plan for next week is to make it ACS week, I suppose. What I'd really like to do is use my Monday and my Thursday stream times to <coughs> um and go for longer i'll just keep going until i get it done sort of thing oh, so it may when it will probably be a bit of a marathon stream for both so the idea is i will work through and get those mods in terms of their back end stuff so the behaviors of the ships the spawning positions the way they interact with players all of that stuff to the level that i wanted it to be at for release and then I will release the mod, and that will get me to a point where I can then continually add additional grids to the mod. So that can be extra bases, extra ships, extra drones, and I don't need to worry about their behavior not working because that's all been set up and tested and works. The nice thing about that is then I can do those ACS modding streams and do things like work through the um, submissions I have on the Discord and eventually hopefully get to a point where I can let people submit new designs for new things and add them because that's what I'd like to get to. So I think it was a really nice thing to be able to do and I'd like to hopefully set it up as well to have like maybe even some separate supporter submissions so they, so I can kind of have two different lists that I work through as a little way to say thank you to all the people who do provide me the ability to do this stuff full time. So that's my plan for next week. But there's also more coming this week, i.e. tomorrow, with Capac, Pav and I playing Ark for the first time on a server which I've had set up for me by Nev, which will eventually be accessible to all of the supporter group as well. Um, so that's tomorrow evening. So tomorrow, like five hours from now. And then Scavenge Hunt's back on Saturday. And then next Wednesday should be Survival Impossible back because I'll put it out for Wednesday, I think. That'll give me time to do a couple of edits, edit passes through it. And then ACS, the Monday after. So that was a whole lot of stuff that's coming. So there's all that <laughs> and plenty more to come. And I'll hopefully see you then. Hope you all have a great day.